It is session three, Stars Without Number, Fells Rising. It is time for the review. Uh, we left our settlement and found a valley that there was some guy in and his, he, I forget his name, like Smutty, something Smutty. like that. <laughs> I like that one better. Spunk. Uh, spunk. Um, he suggested that there were more people that were like living beyond this cloud. We went and we held him in the cloud for a bit because the cloud seemed somewhat dangerous. Uh there was like a burrowing brontosaurus that came out and killed Severe. <laughs> <laughs> and Dr. Henry. Um, yes. Right. Yes. And we had to uh, stabilize Severe. Not so much Dr. Henry. And get her back to base. At which point, like, like I forget, like we froze Dr. Henry's head. <laughs> no, see... Well, he his head, Dr. Henry. Yeah, his, his um, Illumination Boy did the whole glow power make out uh, mouth to mouth thing and failed. Right. <laughs> um, and then, uh, and then we put him in the freezer, which yeah, which marks the <laughs> cyclical campaign of the yes. second of, of each second session where josh's characters uh die and they get put into a freezer of sorts so yes. i'm looking forward to that happening in the second episode of the, the following campaign as well right yep. Just but then it turned out that they had a convenient robot body and that's where his head got attached <laughs> yes uh spunk uh mentioned that he was a cutter and believed he was in purgatory and that the mist would kill him. But uh, Krieg uh, wrestled him in, forced him into the mist and he survived. And then um, <clears throat> as you discussed what to do with him, Krieg promptly killed him. Because of the uh, directive, no one should know that uh, where the camp is. Right. Yep. And, and we were, and we directed the people at the camp to the fact that there's a lot of free brontosaurus meat. Yes. Yeah, because that was the main objective, right? We were trying to find resources because uh, there's going to be a, a huge influx of people, and not really enough for everybody to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> one thing, one thing that was worth uh, noting as well is a Skrillex is able to see um, through his uh, uh, bionic vision. He was able to see through the mist, um, and on where this, where Spunk was saying there was um, another, another, another plane, or um, a di yeah, it was a different plane through the mist. It was, it was actually just uh, all we saw was a uh, canyon. Yeah, it's kind of a drop off. As uh, um, Krieg was wrestling um, Spunk in the, in and out of the mist on their return, someone else came through and flew. I think that one started rising, and then as we were well, as we were leaving, uh, one of the the driving forces was that the bodies that were dead started rising, rising again. Um, here on Paradise Lost. Yeah. So that is when we were had the thrilling chase sequence up the up the thin um, path back towards the top of the valley or the canyon wall and uh, the interaction with the brontosaurus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, I I mean because we saw the bodies like being thrown from the mist into the canyon, right? Yes. So how do we know that they were actually dead and not just like stunned from being thrown? Like, did they have their guts hanging out? No, you, you saw, when you guys first pulled into the canyon, you saw something fly out of the sky and land and then, which you would find out would be Spunk. Spunk ran out and fought him, presumably killed him and then you talked to him. And then the next body that went flying through got up and was like going to throw a rock or something and passed out. I don't recall if we did like medicine or like medicine checks, but I don't know if we, we deeply inspected the bodies to see if they were actually dead. Right. We just assumed, I think. Yeah. 
but that that does leave a good point um, for the next time we see bodies flying out of a mist to make to see if they're actually dead. Uh, and uh, Spunk did have a compound fracture that had healed. His leg looked real funky and severe. Healed some of the the bone spurs. And uh, when you did see the body, uh, the person running around at the bottom of the canyon, Dr. Henry did have some grenades that he dropped down there to try to kill them. And there was a discussion whether his grant money went to uh, demo packs and uh, grenades. And it sounds like it did. Yeah, it did. So we ended um, last session by, I believe, rolling into camp. Um, mm -hmm. And the always dusk paradise lost. Yes. Right. And, well, uh, we, we made it to the medical center because we found that's where we found out about them having potentially a body for Dr. Henry's head. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's when Dr. Chandler came out with another head to uh, to put on the body or a different body. So five days have passed uh, since you your excursion out into this canyon. Uh, following what had happened, General Marquard sent uh, some soldiers, a proper uh, patrol out there, and recovered the brontosaurus meat, which has been like irradiated, turned brought and irradiated. And they are feeding the camp. You guys are now like local celebrities for what you have done, uh, much to Marquard's uh, dismay. Um, actually had like a small little parade for you and um, like a celebration uh, as you were the first to get to taste this rare exotic meat that they had found. Uh, Zavir, you'd be recovering in the infirmary. Um, yep. Illumination boy who once had, you know, was uh, criticized for his live streaming has now got all sorts of followers and people are offering to give him a compad so he can live stream whatever he wants all the time. So does he just have an infinite, like infinite source of compads he can draw from? Yeah. He just, just Twitter, just uh, sends a message on uh, Facebook messenger saying I need another compad. Yeah, some yeah, some of it's private. Some of it's special private compads he has for one on one conversations. How many people live in our settlement? Uh what did what did I oh, that's a good question. Um the camp was gonna double so I think it I think you guys are at two thousand people. Now or bef after the double league or before? Um, this is originally, there's been about 300 people that have shown up. Actually, a ship landed about two kilometers away and some more, um, some more people arrived. <clears throat> so if there's anything, but I would say Zephyr would be re recovering, but if there's anything, uh, Strelix or, um, Krieg would be doing in these in this time of uh, these five days when you're not being heralded as a celebrity and eating this rare exotic meat that you've uh, can probably name if you want you can call it whatever you want whatever this creature is since Skrillex did kill it um well it's it's uh kind of what was it brontosaurus like yeah and it had like a it and it had the body of like a spiny tailed lizard okay i'd probably call it a necker okay so some necker you've been enjoying that necker meat <laughs> i would have gone for spunkosaurus <laughs> since <laughs> <laughs> I, I like mean that could that could be the Latin name. Okay, okay. <laughs> so you've been you've been enjoying some spunk meat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I figure uh, Skrillex would probably be just uh, doing what he normally does between working in the, the loading bay and uh, uh, upkeep with his mech. Yeah, there's a thousand people originally in the camp, so now it's 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 up to like thirteen hundred. Gotcha. Yeah, I imagine. By the way, what I what I would normally do, my normal job here, uh, when they don't have me off doing some special mission, is that I would be leading a community of worshippers of Jagger Fells. Sure. Or yeah, or assisting in the leading of a community. I assume there's like some sort of quasi religion. What is the uh if if there's a religion in Jaggerfells, is there is there a special garments or vestments um that leaders of that religion would, would don? I I mean I like any religion, I would assume there are various different outfits depending on what's going on. Like if you're at a, like an official service, you would dress differently. But in general, my my guy, if he's not wearing his armor, would be wearing some sort of uh, religious robe. I really, really hope that uh, at least maybe in the higher orders of this quasi religion slash potential cult uh, is uh, a mask of Jagger Fells that they just wear. He's definitely got a face that, uh, yeah. I don't know that anybody in the religion would be worthy of looking like our dear leader. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I, I feel like, like I could see, I could definitely see, I could definitely see a statue of Jaggerfells, perhaps, mm -hmm. but like no individual other than Jaggerfells himself. I can't imagine them wearing that mask. Yeah, and I think that would be a crime anyway, like to impersonate. You can't because you can't impersonate. No. Oh, no, not impersonate, but, you know, when they have to make decisions and they have to call upon the power and, and blessing of Jagger, they want his spirit running through them. <laughs> yeah, I imagine, like, you know, a good eight-foot-tall statue of Jagger Fells, naked, <laughs> erect. <laughs> it's, uh, it, like those it just... fertility statues? It just exudes power and stamina, as which is what Sindhu is all about. Yeah, I'll have to put the shirt on Teespring so you can get it. <laughs> <laughs> so in these in these five days, where General Marquar has been uh, annoyed at the at the situation, but uh, probably relieved the fact that there has been this food brought in and that uh, you have been successful in your mission. Um, it's undetermined who brought this up to him, but somebody mentioned uh, you going beyond the mist and using his shuttle, which of course at first he absolutely said no, and then for some reason thought about it and said, boy, that, that sounds like a good idea. Uh, so they've decided that they are going to send you on your next mission. They are going to uh, use uh, strap the uh, the ship, your little vehicle, big hustling, uh, to the shuttle and fly it through the mist to find out what is on the other side. Uh, drop you off, and so you can um, check out what is there and then promptly return at a predetermined uh, time. Is Marquar's ship in a stable enough condition to carry big hustling? Um, they believe so, yes. I mean, I can't, I mean, I, I imagine both vehicles are about just as ratty as each other, so. Uh, Dr. Henry and Illumination Boy will be, will be on the second trip over to assist because Dr. Henry is still getting used to his new body or his 
head is getting used to, or his body's getting used to his new head or something. Lots of rehab needed for that yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. What I don't understand is um, how do they not know what's on the other side of the mist? They fly in and out of here. Uh, the mist is just on this end. It's not a, It's not when they come in. The, the approach they make uh, on the plateau, they don't fly through it. They don't fly through that particular uh, fog. I was sort of asking, I was making that comment to the rest of the crew, but okay. still, presumably there must have been some, somebody took a picture of this planet before they landed on it and founded yes. a base right next to the mysterious wall of mist. Yes. <laughs> so, at some point, they should have, from orbit, seen what was on the other side. Mm -hmm. Their union. They're not, if they're not directed and they're not, they don't pay to do it, then, you know, not going to do it. Either maybe. that or maybe, you know, and this is out of character because my character would never think this. Maybe Jaggerfels is actually just like Vault Tech from Fallout. And he's just setting up like outposts in every crazy space he can find them. Like he can situate one just to see what happens. Like this is our test is whatever the hell's beyond the mist. Will it kill us all? So uh, are there any supplies you're going to take on your trip other than uh, probably each have a Lazarus patch, which a couple they Lazarus have, patches, which they have, uh, uh, seemed to cough up this time. The, the last time, of course, Dr. Henry had them for some reason, along with the grenades. But uh, they, they seem to be coming up with some of the better stuff since uh, your newfound status. Ooh. Now we have a Lazarus patch. One each? One each. Let's see here. Now I have to actually look at the equipment again. And I got to um, remember, remember how to add stuff. Zafir, if you want to make a connect roll, uh, you can to get an additional one since you are in the infirmary. An eight. Yes, you do get a second one. Uh, you're supposed to get one, but they kind of slide you a second one. Very nice. This will be very useful if the other members, uh, if I, for some reason, am knocked out again. What does the Lazarus patch do? It stabilizes. It stabilizes you. Have you figured out how to add things? I haven't. So if, in order to add things, you have to click that pencil in the upper... Uh, right hand corner and that ah, makes yeah. that's what makes the fields all editable then come down to the equipment and click add gotcha oh uh, yeah that's much easier than me just trying to type it in i i'm wearing an art i have an armored undersuit that mm -hmm. was uh gifted of uh, gifted upon graduation mm -hmm. uh, from the academy before we'd head out i'd see if they if there was any uh and since we're going into uh, the unknown um, right next to the camp, I would go to see if they had anything else in the armory that might either, it's either stronger or um, something um, that could be used in a pinch. Okay. Uh, the armored understood an AC of 13. Uh, give me another uh, connect roll. Oof, that's a four. Yeah, they don't really have anything that, that's better than what you got. This is okay. I am grateful enough to be fed and housed and potentially have my cot stolen from me uh, by our lords and saviors. Do I still have a cot or... Um, it is like my uh, sitting, laying in, in, cause I'm laid up, um, and recovering. Is that like my, my cot now? Yeah, that's sort of, that's sort of your room, but, um, they didn't move your stuff out of there just because 
that would really look bad if they start moving your stuff around after what you've sacrificed. And Illumination Boy did not move in with you. Very good. This is uh, this is pleases me on all levels. So I guess then, yeah. In addition to some extra rations, because I didn't really bring a whole lot, uh, I would want a pair of binoculars and a survey scanner. It's tech level four. It does atmospheric readings and chemical analyses of things we find. Give me a connect roll, or if you think there is another applicable skill you could use. Uh, connect is fine, although I'm not good at it. Three. <laughs> uh, they have a pair of binoculars. They've got lots of cracks and stuff in them. Uh, not very well. Uh, they have all issued all their scan survey scanners out. Okay. You do have a hustle point if you think that survey scanner is really worth it. No. Or you could have Skrillex go try to ground one up. Or you could go just kill the person who's got that one of them. I mean, is, yeah. Skr is Skrillex <laughs> Acer? Is Skrillex have the capabilities of a survey scanner just by his make and model? I don't know. Well, Skrillex is not a robot. Skrillex operates one. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, in terms of uh, his capacities with regards to that, he, he has those polyspectral sensors. Uh, but, but other than that, in terms of uh, <clears throat> what's built into his mech, uh, that's pretty much it in terms of um, data collection within the surroundings. But Skrillex is, is an expert um, and could possibly build one from junk. And I imagine Skrillex working in the, the loading docks, there might be some uh, equipment that's tossed or, or something, it, it, not there, somewhere nearby that he might be able to salvage. Okay. Oh, I also want a climbing harness, which is tech level three. Would you want something like program or fix? I imagine it'd probably be a little of both. Yeah, you could do fix. Okay. Never mind, by the way, I have a climbing harness. Okay. Eight. Um, you managed to get one together uh, that, I mean, it's not perfect, but mm -hmm. it should do the job. Uh, the climbing harness that, that they offer you, if you need one, yeah, they say that it's rated for about 50 kilograms. And what was, what was the equipment that I was jury rigging together? Uh, it's basically an atmospheric and chemical scanner. Okay. So, uh, Krieg, I, I heard that you were looking for something like this. I, I, I put together something as best I can. It's, it's still made from junk, but it should be at least serviceable. Well, thank you. That will, will come in handy. What, what, what are you hoping to use it for exactly? Well, we've been sent out there to see what we can find. I was wondering what the mist was when we were standing right next to it. That's what this is for, to tell us what it's made of. Oh, good call. That probably would be helpful information. It's probably just atmospheric moisture, but uh, better be safe than sorry. <clears throat> So as you're examining the um, survey scanner, it does have a video feature on it, and there's actually... I will, I will not tell Illumination Boy that it can take video. It actually has a, a, a clip on there already 
because this is was put together from pieces of parts. And it actually looks like somebody who looks like Kevin, like demonstrating how to do a karate chop, but it's only like a five second clip. See, now I have to picture that being like start the Star Wars kid where he's just spinning around like a maniac <laughs> think, thinking he's doing karate. So it is the um, the morning of uh, Balfour's Day 249 in Telly, and uh, there is a crowd out here, much bigger than when you left camp before. Um, as you guys are all next to your uh, big hustling vehicle, ready to uh, head out. The, uh, uh, go ahead. So, uh, are, why are all these people here watching? Uh, I do not know. Um, maybe they think we're going to bring back more food. It's been a few days. Um, you said you said the Spunkosaurus was uh, radiated. Yes. Um, do we notice uh, any effects of uh, everyone kind of eating the irradiated uh, meat? Mm -mm. So, you know, your typical GI issues, but other than that. Right. Typical radiation based <laughs> GI issues. <laughs> this is a normal thing on Paradise Lost. Uh, my home planet, too. I don't know. Uh, perhaps we've filled them with hope. Hope for a brighter future. Well, uh, not sure they're placing it in the right group, but <laughs> we'll see. Well, it is a fickle thing. I think we, I am just grateful to have uh, some attention. It makes me feel like I am proud to be a part of Sindhu. See, I'm, I'm a little opposite. I'm not so fond of the attention. But, uh, uh, we'll be gone anyway soon, hopefully. So I'll have to deal with it much longer. Do we see General Markwar anywhere in the crowd? Uh, yes, you do. He is standing there watching. Uh, one of the uh, one of the uh, locals comes running up to you, severe, and hands you a pack of crackers and tells you good luck. Runs back. Thank you. I look at the crackers. Uh, are they just like a, Is it? Are they just like rations or like standard standard camp fare? Or just... Yeah, they're like. Uh, they're in the the uh, like drab green uh, package. It's been opened and it looks like they tried to reseal it. So there's like five of the six crackers in there. You know, they're the <coughs> crackers that survived for like 50 years. I'll safely stow them. I have uh, I I packed up on seven rations. Okay. Uh, while we are away or getting prepared. Didn't want to be caught dead without food again, um, and I would have stowed them in the in the in big hustle and the glove compartment. They'll probably be they'll be in there for like years in the glove compartment. <laughs> you ever you ever think about? What? Why is it called a glove compartment? I don't think anybody I know stores gloves in there. Yeah, I think they used to. I believe they did used to store driving gloves in the, in the glove compartment. 
yeah. like in the 1910s when cars were new, there was an etiquette to it all. <laughs> yeah, they had like the leather, the leather gloves. Also nice when it's like cold out or hot out and you touch the steering wheel and it's like icy or like a hundred degrees. I can see that. Just uh, it's an interesting little anachronism. So I would probably uh, stand up and announce to the crowd that really, we need no thanks. Thanks should go to General Marquar and to Jagger Fells himself. They are doing the hard work. Everybody lets out a cheer. Marquar just kind of shrieks, <laughs> slumps his shoulders like, oh my God, will they just leave already? Point him out in the crowd. <laughs> give your thanks to that person right there. And then I'll give like a 20 minute sermon on the. <laughs> 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 on the many values that Jagger Fells teaches us all. Okay. Uh, give me a lead roll or connect. I'll give you connect too. Meanwhile, can I just do talk? <laughs> yeah, you can do talk. I'll let you do talk. Meanwhile, Skrillex is cringing because he's heard everything that Krieger, Krieger said on their hunting trips. This is five. Uh, a couple people seem to be kind of fade, <clears throat> you know, after the first minute or so. But uh, uh, well, you know. they got nineteen more to go. <laughs> <laughs> but the ones that are near Marquar uh, absolutely take everything in because they're concerned about whether he'll notice or not and uh, Xavier would use some of the crackers that were just bestowed upon her um, um, to offer up his communion um, so as he's doing the sermon, it'll like she'll beckon for a line um, and start breaking up the crackers, okay, um, and pl placing them on the tongues of the, of the believers. And my sermon definitely will include the story about how Jaggerfells once uh, permanently scarred his face so that he would have a flaw. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, so that he could understand what it was like to be like the rest of us. So, about 200 people go through the line. Pretty much everybody who was watching. Uh, Marquard does not. Um, but, Strelix, your boss goes through the line and he reaches in his pocket. He's like, good luck out there. And he hands you a can of WD-40. Oh, thank you. This, this will uh, come great and handy. And you, I imagine the cracker pieces were bigger and then they get smaller and smaller as the line starts to get longer. <laughs> Either that, or this is like, uh, uh, like the beatitudes, like the crackers. Like you, no matter how much you break them, like they just keep coming. <laughs> <laughs> so that'll be the next sermon. The miracle of the crackers is going to be my second sermon when we leave next time. <laughs> Six crackers, five crackers, bed one already open package of crackers was used to feed the multitudes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Book of Krieg. <laughs> so uh, the the shuttle craft begins to uh, come up over near where you guys are, um, and some soldiers come running over. Uh, you guys are inside. Uh, Strelix would be driving. Who is going to navigate that now Dr. Henry is not here? So I have no skills that are at all similar to navigation. 
Well, it, like what's involved in navigation? Is it not possible for me to pilot and navigate? Yeah, you could do that. It's just good to have a co-pilot. No. Well, my mech is my co-pilot. <laughs> What's the uh, what, what's the what's the skill related to uh, the navigation piece? Hmm. Is there a skill that counts uh, that we're going to use? If this were D and D, I guess I do have. I did put a point into survive. Yeah. So I have plus navigate zero. difficult terrain, survive. Yeah. I also have a point in survive. That's good. Um. So I guess I can uh, help navigate. Okay. Uh, and then uh, Zafir, unless you want to sit in the Illumination Boy uh, uh, spring to life toilet seat in the very back, I'm sure you'll avoid that, but you can sit wherever you want in the back. I'll uh, sit on my, my couch. Okay. I got a Just... nine on my survival check. By the way, when while I'm using my uh, polyspectral sensors, I imagine it is very much like the vision through the Terminator. <laughs> Wasn't that mostly like monochromatic? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's really great for sizing up people's clothing. <laughs> so they start to strap your vehicle to the shuttle. I have seven in my pilot roll. Okay. And they begin to lift off. And the, the crowd all cheers. And then, of course, walks away as the dust and everything blows in their face. And Marquar goes back into his residence, disgusted that this should have taken like 10 minutes and instead took damn an hour. Some bullshit speech. One day they whatever. will refer to this as hustleness. <laughs> and hustleness will be celebrated every year. It was, uh, and the, and it will also be known as the Sermon on Big Hustling. <laughs> so said the Book of Krieg. So the ship begins to take off as you guys are attached to it. Headed out over the camp. It really works because this is our Christmas episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you are flying... Uh, and then you begin to enter the mist. And then Marquardt tells him to drop us from a mile up. <laughs> <laughs> so as you're going through the mist uh, and, you're, and you're in the ship, you can feel you like drop mm -hmm. and like your stomachs go like almost in, into your uh, into your mouth. It's like Whoop. and it does a couple times like it's just, it uh, keeps dropping. Um, and then you, uh, the ship seems to like go through some kind of turbulence and then you're out of the mist and you're looking down at similar landscape as you have seen, this kind of brown uh, wasteland. Uh, as the ship is like getting ready, it begins to descend so everybody give uh, at least, uh, guys, give me some notice rolls if you can. Notice, notice, notice. Seven. Five. Creed got a seven as well. Okay. So, so Creed and. Severe, you you hear something like hit the side of your vehicle. Um, it, it's it sounds like something hitting metal, like a pinging noise. Um, I would look out the wind, look out the side window. Okay. Are we still in the air when we hear this? You're still in the air. And you can see down below there's something objects are moving and then you see some sort of object being flung and like it goes over the ship goes around it like objects are being thrown at you 
Do we have communication with the ship? No. Are we able to see what these objects are? Uh, right now, there's a lot of dust and stuff. It's hard to discern what it is. But the ship begins to land, drop and is getting closer and closer. And you hear a couple bar more barrages of bang, bang, bang. And then suddenly, you feel the ship get released as you free fall to the ground and a big thud and you are now on the planet. Is the, uh, is the, after we are, uh, land on the planet and is the, is it still very dusty? Yeah, there's a lot of dust. Now, as you look around, you can see that there are three sets of, they don't like vehicles as much as they're really small. Uh, you would guess there's some sort of bicycle, bicycle, but it's a really long bicycle. Um, and they've got uh, these long extensions on either side, and these they have like uh, slings with rocks, and they're they're throwing them. So there are like mechanical things that look long bicycles where there are cr creatures that look like long bicycles. They look like uh, humanoids. I mean, they don't look like creatures. So you're saying they're creatures, they're humanoids riding bicycles with yeah. slings? Yes. I thought we were being attacked by bicycle-like creatures. <laughs> <laughs> Then they were humans, but bicycle like. <laughs> Maybe that, yeah. Um, uh, all right, so what do we do with this now? Uh, run them over. <laughs> yeah, okay. Relix will begin uh, moving the vehicle to run one of them over. All right, give me a pilot roll. Eight. Are you using the stun bumper? Absolutely, I thought it was just always on. Okay. In fact, I thought it just reacted to uh, hitting things. Yeah, you just ram into one of them and you see there's a charge. And then you're just like, doo -doo 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 -doo. and you keep driving, and it's just a big pile of twisted metal in your rear view. Nice. Um, do they look like humans? Yes. A couple of them get up and start scampering. Uh, <coughs> one of them tries, throws a sling, and uh, you can hear it hit the side of the vehicle cracking a window. We should probably get rid of the glass windows on this thing anyway. Um, you sure we don't, we still don't know what this mist is, this, this fog. Maybe, uh, maybe Craig, you should use that, that analyzer I built. Yeah, I guess, uh, do, do our windows open? Like, do they roll down or something? Sure, do they? I mean, you can tell me, yeah. So, uh, but I will stick the sensor and out the window and start to take a reading of whatever it is we're driving through. Uh, so the mist is behind you. You would have to turn around and drive the other way because the ship went through the, you, you passed through it already. <clears throat> it's, I, it's just dusty. It's not yeah. misty. So I still will take a reading of whatever the air is around us to see uh, what's in it. Yeah, it's very similar to your plateau. Same readings. You can breathe the air. Probably be best to have some kind of filtered mass just because of all the particulates. But There's nothing unusual here. We should just make sure we have masks on. Okay. Well, I have... Uh air filters in my Mac anyway, so. And uh, I would imagine that 
at, at this point, like living on this planet so long that there is rare, there are rare occasions when we actually don't or we aren't wearing masks. You know, maybe like to sleep at night or something in closed rooms, but. <clears throat> so everyone give me another notice roll. Three. Ten. Eight. So Zafir, uh, you're uh, watching these, these whoever these are, raiders or whoever, as they throw rocks and uh, missing the vehicle in your rear view and hit, like, crack some of the glass. But uh, for Krieg and Skrillex, you can see out to the window and you see that the shuttle is having a hard time uh, staying up. It's like you can see the power flickering like it's having like power fluctuations and seems to be descending. Did they just take out our shuttle with rocks? <laughs> no, there's got to be some other explanation. Maybe, maybe a glitch, maybe something in the, the atmosphere. Uh, that sensor is not exactly precise, so it, it may be that there are other things going on in this mist that we're not sure of. We need to go and help them. It, if, if we ever expect reinforcements, we need to be able to send a shuttle back. Otherwise, they will leave us to die. Yeah, the suspicious part of my mind is wondering if Marquardt just underestimated how long it would take for them to set us down. <laughs> so his plan was to have them crash with us strapped to the bottom. I agree, though. We should, uh, we need to go to the, where they are, make sure that they can take off again, and they aren't sworn by these bicycle riding morons. Yes. All right. Uh, so. Uh, Skrillex pilots his mech to pilot the vehicle right. <laughs> and uh, head towards the ship, uh, running over any bicycle people <laughs> that happen to see along the way. All right. Uh, yeah, just give me a pilot roll. Can I uh, add my survive to help him navigate so he hits everyone? Uh, you sure can. You will get a, you can use a bonus dice. How do I use a bonus dice? So just roll three and take the two best numbers. So I, I got a seven on my survive check. If it so go. I'm like point, Xavier is pointing, ah, yes, there was one in the dust right there. Ah, oh, yeah, and then over there, just like back and forth. All right, so uh, regardless, because the bonus dice, it, it was a one, a one, and a four. So I got a five. Oh, yeah, well, these the, guys are the wildly... Four is the, the four is then the bonus die, so that was hugely important. <laughs> yeah, because that would have been a critical failure. Well, I, I rolled, so my pilot check, I rolled uh, without the bonus die. So the, the original roll was a one and a four. Okay. okay. I rolled the bonus die on top of it to see if it would replace the one, and it did not. But yeah, in that, in that sense, if, if it was... These guys uh, are kind of wily. Krieg is still going to yell out, like, as we get each one, uh, like, a running total of the points, the point value for the ones we got. You hear a thought, like, you think you nailed one of these uh, on this tandem bike, and you see the bike go flipping into the rear view, but the two people are not on it, and then you can hear doop, 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 as they're on top of this vehicle now. Ah. Guys, uh, I think we got a couple stowaways. I am going to roll down my window and crawl out on top. Yes. <laughs> you want me to make like an exert check or something? Yeah, let's make an exert check. 11. I mean, make it look easy. And then I will ignite my telekinetic blade. All right. Uh, give me an initiative roll. Three. <clears throat> uh, 
I mean, I expect them to go first. I'm crawling out there. Yeah. <laughs> so they have, uh, uh, so the one guy tries to whirl his, um, uh, throw a rock and uh, I don't think a 10 hits. And you just see, Strelix, you just see a, a rock just bounce off the, off the hood. The other guy has like a spear and he tries to jab you with it. Uh, 17. That hits. And you take one damage. He just grazes you. Uh, you can see that they've got like leathers and they're just covered in dust and they wear masks. It looks like they have some kind of mask on and it looks like a dog face. So it's my turn? Yep. So I will, uh, whichever one actually hit me, I'm going to whirl my telekinetic blade at him. Oh, only an eight to hit. That does not do it. Nope. But if he has an AC of less than 13, I do four shock damage. Yes, he less, does. Less than or equal to 13, that is. Yes, he does. <clears throat> okay. So he gets... Uh... So I assume like I, I basically stab at him and miss and then wheel around with my fist and just punch him. Yep. Uh, do we have comms to com communicate with each other? If only Illumination Boy were here hanging out the back <laughs> end. <laughs> he could just narrate the battle. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do like to think that that's, he would just be outside. He's just on a chair strapped to the back <laughs> outside of the vehicle. <laughs> um, Xavier, can you check on uh, Krieg, see how it's going? I'm hearing a bunch of rocks. Um, uh, of course. Um, have I heard like the thuds? Yeah, you would have heard somebody land like on the roof of the vehicle. So give me a, an, uh, give me a roll, a uh, initiative roll. And, and uh, for Skrillex too, so. I have three. Well, you're driving. Um, so I guess then it's Skrillex's turn. Uh, what did you roll? A one. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, you'll be able to act in this next round. So it's their turn as this guy just got punched. He's going to try to punch you back because he's got the sling. He can't, he can't hit you with the sling. Uh, that's a mighty nine. That does not hit. Yeah, he's sliding around and, you know, the other guy will try to stab you. Uh, well, you know, you, you hit the guy who stabbed you, right? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, he tries to punch you and misses. The other guy um, wheels back with his sling and hits you for one point. Okay. So I am going to uh, continue to attack the guy who hit me the first round. Okay. Another eight to hit. And then so four more shock damage as I miss again and then punch him in frustration. Yes, you punch him. <laughs> he hurls off the back and you hear crunch and he just, just tumbles off a big dust ball. Strelix. Uh, are there any more of these bicyclists in, uh, in front of us? Give me a notice roll. Three. 
three. You do not see any more. You think that there at least is two more sets of them that are following your shuttle that is having a, that's trying to ascend, but it's having a hard time. Okay. Um, well, we're heading towards the shuttle, right? Right. So they're like, uh, Oh, on the like, other side from us. Yeah, they're like 40 meters to the side. Okay. Um, so I guess hearing everything going on and, and not hearing from Krieg, which, you know. Uh, is, We've been like 10 seconds. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, Skrillex, he's, he's a little dude with equally small patience. So, uh, he's going to do some... Uh, defensive driving hopefully to shake them off without shaking Krieg off okay so pilot yeah let's get a pilot roll and then we'll do the uh evasion all right pilot roll was a five <clears throat> i made the evasion roll Nice. Uh, yeah, the other guy slips a little bit, but he stays on. So you don't hear any tumbling or anything. Severe. Uh, Xavier is going to uh, draw her pistol her laser pistol and kind of not climb fully out, but like yeah. roll, you know, roll down the window a little bit more and kind of go like get her, her eye, her like eyes over the top and then see if she can like, so then see the situation mm -hmm. and presumably she sees Krieg, um, his abs rippling. And yes, then she yeah. sees uh, this one. There's just one because there was two, yep. right? Yeah. So then she's going to pull out her pistol and like shakily just try to shoot um, to see if she can get him. <laughs> That's a, it's a zero. <laughs> to hit. <laughs> zero to hit. <laughs> wow. <laughs> It was a three, and then I have a minus three. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not a critical fail, so. So, uh, yeah, the, the bumping of the bodies uh, from <laughs> that uh, Skrillex is hitting, hitting, along with everything else, it just goes way wide. All right, the... Back to the top of the lineup. The guy will, he, he's going to try to punch you this time as you've gotten closer. Uh, not with a uh, six. So he swings wildly. No, I swing my blade back at him. A 12 to hit that time. Yeah, that's a hit. So five damage. <laughs> Rather than four if I had missed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you take uh, you hit, it, hit hit him in the arm. A big piece of his leather comes like comes off. I'm, it like burns off, right? Isn't this what like it's basically radiant or fire or something? Uh, it's it's telekinetic force. So you know it actually does do slashing damage as it hits. Okay, but it cuts a big chunk. I, yeah, I sort of imagine it being like Futurama. This lightsaber like blade mm -hmm. it comes out. And then you club somebody with it like a stick. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, we got the beat there, candy asses. <laughs> Strelix. Uh, so I'm going to gently accelerate the vehicle and then suddenly brake. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, give me another um, pilot roll. Doesn't seem like the DC should be too high on I press the gas and then I press the brake. 
uh, seven. I mean, are you, I mean, is it just, you're doing this, you're not like coming to a dead stop? Oh no, I am, I am. I'm trying to throw, <laughs> I'm trying to buck the bad guys off of the truck. And you know, if the others come off too, I'll be at least able to see them. But then if it's just the other guy, then I can speed up and run in my <laughs> Okay. Evasion roll. I fail. <laughs> so <laughs> you do have a hustle point. That's true. I will use my hustle point. Okay. And fail slightly worse. <laughs> <laughs> you slam on the brake. You see a body. It is Krieg. Dum dum tumbles down <laughs> onto the hood. <laughs> um, and the other guy, he managed to stay on? Yes. And what about Zavir? Are you out there too? No. Zavir is like peeking, his, peeking her head out the window. And um, it's kind of like, not really, she's not very dexterous, so she's not going to try to get on top of the, the, the roof if she can avoid it. You take it. one damage, uh, Krieg. So Skrillex is going to be like, damn it! Sorry, Krieg! <laughs> uh, and, and then he's just going to keep the car, the, the vehicle stopped, uh, and then he's going to poke his head up uh, and uh, give, give me a physical save, uh, Zavir. All right. I failed. Okay. So uh, when Cree <clears throat> comes plopping down, then you, it stops short and you hear Zavir, and then you see Zavir's weapon go boom, boom, and on the hood as well. Damn it. Skrillex. Drive, drive more carefully. Uh, I'm not driving anymore. I'm fighting. So he, he <laughs> stopped the car and he's about to enter into combat with his uh, circular saw hands. Uh, Zavir, you're up. All right. Um, so car is no longer is it so you're no longer driving so it's the, the car is is it a, did it just like it's stop? a dead stop okay yeah. so is Avir's gonna then climb climb up the rest of the window or climb up onto the roof and, and grab grab her gun oh, yeah it's on the hood yeah yeah I'm, she's gonna climb okay. up onto the hood and grab okay. her grab her gun and then take uh an aim uh, take an aim Uh, it's an eight. Do you do shock damage as well? I do not. Okay. So you fire and miss. Well, this guy has a target. He's going to use his sling. And you take one damage severe as he throw hurls a rock at you, and you are struck with it. Um. It hits, it hits her and there is uh, blood that is starting to uh, uh, pour down her face. So I charge forward now that we're stopped uh, and try to swing and crit fail. <laughs> <laughs> that one. Uh, okay. So what do I do now? Uh, do you want to? Yeah. Forty-three. Okay, you just embarrass yourself. So I charge him, running up the windshield, across the roof, <laughs> down the back, and out into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's just kind of looking, going, "What the hell?" <laughs> Strelix. All right, so now I'm climbing up on uh, onto the car, uh, and uh, once I've completely climbed up, I'm going to uh, my hands are going to become circular saws, and I'm going to be start uh, swinging into this dude in okay. front of me. Technically, I do four shock damage, but I'm okay if we're going to rule that on a crit <laughs> fail you don't. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, so, circular saw hands. I roll a six. <laughs> but I do two shock damage if it's equal to or less than 13. Yep. So the blades whiz by and actually catch some of him. And big chunks of leather come out and he's bleeding. He looks in rough shape. Zavir. Um, maybe a third time is the charm. As she goes and, 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 and raises her pistol for a 10. And we can't roll today. <laughs> uh, although, yeah, although for you, that was a 13. So I guess. Yeah, Zavira is not built for combat. <laughs> <laughs> she is built to save lives, not take them. Fire is just missing. Just barely does he avoid the one damage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. So this guy tries to go after Strelik since he's right in front of him. He tries to kick you, and he, uh, nineteen hit. Yeah. Oh yeah. He, bo he boots you right in the chest. You take two damage. Okay. So uh, inside his mech, Skrillex pulls a, a Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, now on the ground outside, I do a leap that I assist with my own telekinetic force to jump onto the roof. And swing twenty four to hit. Yeah, eight damage. Yeah, you just clobber this guy, and he goes flying off and lands on the ground, breaking his mask. What was his mask? Was it, it just like a breathing mask or something? No, it looked like a porcelain mask of a dog. So as you guys are all. Re you're you just knock him off and you're all kind of like looking at each other you look up just in time to see the shuttle as it attempts to ascend over this it looks like sheer canyon wall and does not make it and with a loud boom it explodes into a huge fireball and the remaining pieces fall to the ground damn it i need to get there to see if there's anyone who survived uh, first, let's get in the car to avoid any uh, trouble. Oh no, they're coming! I can hear their <laughs> theme music. <laughs> that was our SOS. <laughs> General Markwar is going to be very unhappy. I hope he does not kill us for destroying his home, the only ship <laughs> that has ever entered this atmosphere. And his personal, uh, his personal ride, and take it out of this place. I think we're safe, but the uh, and I point over to Skrillex. I think the, you know the maintenance people may be in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's just go. So yeah, we climb back into the car, and. Uh, I assume Skrillex does so slowly after being buffeted <laughs> about, <laughs> but I will direct him to drive us towards the shuttle. Okay. Um, what's the uh, how uh, what what reset system string? Uh, I think it's rest. So like a long rest will reset all your systems. Yeah, you thing. should. Yeah, you should be full up because you rested. You had like five days of rest. Gotcha. <clears throat> um, uh, I actually don't know if the, the biocyanics would be effective against uh, with Skrillex, since <laughs> I, I'm not sure how that works and how Mike wants to play that. But uh, Krieg, uh, are you hurt? Can... I I am some somewhat hurt. Uh, let him, let me uh, make you feel a little better. 
Um, and uh, I'll, uh, I thought that would roll. And you take your, you, oh, you heal for six damage or six health. Yeah, so as you do this, you see I'm healed back to max. Um, and you'll take one system strain. <clears throat> Technically, it's seven, but. And, uh, and I will uh, also, uh, I, I would do that myself as well. Um, and I'm, I'm healed back to max. Okay. So you guys are driving towards the, um, the wreckage? Yep. Okay. You uh, outpace the bicyclists. Uh, as we're driving past them, I would just try to shoot shoot them from like the, out the window. Okay. Like I I don't know I wouldn't like I would just try to pick them off if I can, um, just because they've already given us trouble. No, they're not friendly. Yeah. So I just I just looked up the rule. System strain goes away at a rate of one per night of rest, as long as you actually have food and are not sick or you know suffering from some other privation. Okay, it makes sense. So whatever is we strain we had from the last one would have definitely been healed. Right. Right. But I, so it's a, from the description. It's apparently a question for the. GM, like if you're camping, is that enough to get rid of system strain or what? But right now I was at zero. Okay. Uh, so give me a couple rolls and give me like three attack rolls if you're going to shoot at these guys. Give you three shots as you are driving past them. I would also shoot at them. Okay. We got, we got more attackers now. No, we're Where? just shooting. We're just shooting while we drive to the wreckage. At at people or just into the fog? <laughs> at, at the other <laughs> at the other cyclists. Are, are you attacking, trying to attacking the, the darkness? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. I'm attacking the darkness. <laughs> I got a, a a twenty-one and eight and a thirteen. I got a negative two, a ten, and a ten. <laughs> Um, that actually, that, that negative two is a, that is a, a crit fail. Okay. Um, you can use a hustle point and reroll that, or did you already use yours? I did not. Okay. Or you can just accept the, you just roll to see what the failure is. Um, I will accept the failure. All right, give me a percentage roll. Forty-four. You only embarrass yourself. Uh, Xavier is embarrassed, but she knows she's a terrible, terrible shot. So <laughs> it's not like it's not that bad. In terms of embarrassment. So give me two damage rolls, uh, Krieg. Uh, where were they? So it was a 12 on the first shot and an 11 on the second shot. So there's, uh, so you just blast two of these guys who are riding this uh, quad bike, killing two of them, and they just kind of slump over and the bike kind of turns and they wreck. It's just a big flipping over and they just go flying. <laughs> uh, there's only one, there's one other bike that Zafir was shooting at and then there's one lone unicyclist behind them. <laughs> no, not a unicyclist. <laughs> <laughs> See, they have their hands free. Those are the dangerous ones. <laughs> right. The ones on the, uh, 
the elongated bike's not so bad. So you pull up to uh, get up to the wreckage. It's just a big ball of burning mass at this point. I mean, um, nothing I can do to put out the flames. <laughs> so uh, did we see any? I assume there are escape pods of some sort on this ship. Did we see any of them eject? No. Uh, Skrillex, can you put out the flaming wreckage? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> uh, okay, I don't know what your robot powers are. Uh, I, I, I don't have uh, fire suppressant built into this mech. Um, but I can see if I can find any survivors. So Skrillex will get as close as he can to the wreck without destroying himself or burning up or anything and uh, try to use his polyspectral sensors to see if he can see within the fire and smoke for any potential survivors. I thought you were going to get up really as close as you could and go, is anyone okay in there? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if there are no survivors, a, a close second for priority, uh, perhaps even greater priority, would be any interesting tech that seems to have survived. Right now, it's been described as all on fire. <laughs> so we'll probably have to wait for the fire to go out before we can salvage anything. Um, give, you can give me a notice roll. <clears throat> Nine. Uh, you do not detect any anyone alive, but one of the uh, computer banks you can see has been damaged, but is not burning. But it's in the middle of where the fire is. Uh, is there any way that I could get around it? Maybe if I do a pilot roll for my mech. Like have your mech go around the fire and grab it? Well, I would still be in the mech. Right. But yeah, but yeah. Okay, so how re fire resistant is your mech? Uh, I mean, it's it's made of metal and everything, but I imagine that the the circuitry uh, probably doesn't have great heat resistance. Uh, there's probably some pieces of it that are plastic uh, and definitely doesn't really have an effective cooling system to where like it would effectively protect Skrillex from pro prolonged um, heat exposure, but mm -hmm probably could survive a couple of seconds in fire. Okay, so... I mean, I can use telekinesis to try to move things. So could I try to assist him by, like, trying to force the flames aside a little bit? Yeah. Okay. So, yes. yeah, so would, uh... Hear Skrillex, his, his mech would throw up his hands and he'd say, Computers! And <laughs> you'd be r start running. Okay, so what we'll do for this is, uh, Creed, go ahead and give me a telekinesis uh, roll. Ten. Okay. So you get a bonus die. Strelix, uh, pilot. Okay. Is that what we talked about, right? Yeah, you can do that. Thank God for the bonus roll. Uh, so that is... Seven. Okay. So you manage to get around some of the fire. You take one damage to the mech as it the couple flames like scorch a little bit and it's getting hot in there in the control center. Um, but you manage to grab this big like uh, computer box data something 
tech, insert uh, computer technical uh, descriptor here. And uh, black box. Sure. Uh, and remove it and start heading out. So uh, no survivors, but found this cool piece of tech. Can't wait to find out what I can salvage it into. Uh, it is a sad day for Snow. Very sad. So what do we do now? Because uh, if they use this dropship to, to take us here, I assume it's too far for us to head back in this vehicle that they that we've got. I assume they dropped us here because they wanted us to be on the other side of the whatever that vapor is, so that we could see what was outside of it without having to drive through it. I think getting back, we're going to have to brave driving through it. But yeah, it is a good question. Know. What's the what's like the Stuff. What was that? I thought we we're still in the stuff. We were no, in we like were, dust. We're, right. We flew over the, the curtain of mist. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Yeah, we're just in dusty air beyond the mist. Okay. So that's, that makes Where sense. apparently the, the local technology leaves people riding Schwinn's around. <laughs> But it is a good question. Like, how how long do we think it would take to drive back? Assuming we drove straight back, how long would it take? And like, how long do our batteries last? Yeah, and maybe eight, more of a Josh question. Eighteen hours to drive back. Yeah, your batteries. battery lasts eighteen hours. So, how long do we think it would take to drive back? Uh, you're probably. 5k from the mist that's now behind you mm. so you would assume that that i mean it's at least 5k from there i mean to there so but we flew did we fly because before when we encountered the mist it would there was a steep drop off and like so i guess i was picture i'm picturing that we're we flew over through the mist or over it and and so if we wanted to go back, we'd have to find a way either up or like some other way to kind of gain ground. To I, get. I was, I guess I was picturing it differently. So this is, we try to probably clarify. I assume we're still on the same plateau as the outpost or, or are we off the plateau? You know that you went through the mist and it was assumed that you would end up on a different plateau. Okay, so we'd have to figure out a way to drive the vehicle down the side of whatever plateau we're on now, across back over to the mist, up the plateau on the other side, and then back to home base. So we are basically stranded here forever with no hope. <laughs> Good to know. Well, Good. I hope you enjoyed the campaign. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, don't lose all hope. I still have this salvage tech. Maybe I can create a long range communication so that- I hope, I hope it is running Windows Vista. <laughs> oh, don't worry about that. I really engineered that long ago. We're on Windows 30,000 now. <laughs> Windows Vista, that would be Sindoom's official friggin. <laughs> program <laughs> microsoft has said it never intends to issue another version of windows so it would still be windows 10. <laughs> uh, did they really say that oh yeah they said they'll update windows 10 but they don't intend to put out a new version yeah right until the time that they do of course well but you know it's like a superhero dying he's dead for now Right. <laughs> so that you, uh, as you're having this discussion with the black box and this trying to decide, you do have one unicyclist and one uh, 
three whatever three bicycle three people on a bike tandem try bicyclist headed your way let them come revenge we need revenge all right so skrillex is gonna kneel down uh with his uh um shoulder mounted rifle coming out and start shooting at the oncoming cyclists. Okay. I'll make sure you get the uh, unicyclist first. They have their hands free and are bit, therefore more dangerous. Good, good idea. So I will shoot at the unicyclist first. Okay, go for it. All right. And I'm using burst fire. Parts. Uh, I, I, my attack roll is a nine. Other, oh, you, you are wrecking a lot of uh, dirt and dust around it. And you may want to conserve ammunition, as <laughs> I don't know when we're going to get more. It, hey, hey! I learned how to shoot from the best enemies of the A team. <laughs> All right, uh, hey, graduate of Stormtrooper Academy. <laughs> uh, you all can get an attack. I rolled a 14. That is enough to hit. Eight damage. Who are you trying to go after? The unicyclist, of course. He's clearly the leader. You blast, uh, you blast him with the telekinetic energy, and he goes flying off his unicycle. And it's moving forward, <laughs> slowing down, but there is nobody on it anymore. I mean, if it's still upright, that's that's impressive tech <laughs> for a unicycle. <laughs> I uh, thought I thought maybe it'd be like a Hollywood movie. The unicycle would inexplicably explode. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead, Zavir. Ah, uh, Zavir got a zero. <laughs> So, shot goes wild. You, you should actually shoot into the wreckage. <laughs> and hear somebody cry out in pain. <laughs> All right, let's uh, roll initiative here. They were hanging on for life. Like, they are on fire, like, one hit point left, and then that just did it in. They just crawled through the flames. <laughs> I got three on my initiative. <laughs> wow. All right. Uh, roll the eight sider again, uh, Kurt or Mike. Uh, wait, you said a roll initiative again? Or just roll that. Just roll the eight-sider. Just straight up roll. You uh, roll a four. Okay, you guys go first. You want to go first, Kurt? Sure. So I focus the energy of my abs again and fire out at them. Mm-hmm. 23 to hit. <laughs> yeah. Four damage. Okay. Yep, you blast one of them, the first, the lead one. The, 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 the bicycle just kind of swerves a little bit, but they maintain control. Strelix. All right. Uh, they're still at range, right? None of them yeah. have gotten close enough to be in melee. Um, you could move up and get into melee with them. Oh, no. That's not what I'm asking. That I don't want to do that. Okay. You can uh, still wait. shoot at range, yes. Okay. So, once again, uh, combat ri ri rifle with burst 19 and 13 damage. Okay. Is it... Uh, uh, 
Is that the one he hit or a different one? Uh, was Kurt going after, was Creed going after the unicyclist? Oh, he's dead. Oh, then probably I, I would just do randomly. So how many of them are there? Three. Three, okay. So the third one. So yeah, the uh, so as you fire, the one in the lead ducks, and the other one ducks, and the other guy's just standing there like this, and he gets blasted right in the face. <laughs> it goes flying off. You know, in roll twenty, you can actually roll a one d three rather than one d four and ignore four. Oh, interesting. But. Thankfully, I did roll a three on the D four, so that was right. the. So yeah. the 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 lead one is riding. Um, you hear like ring ring, and in the front <laughs> wheel, these blades come out, and he sw tries to side swipe everybody. So everybody, give me evasion roll. I made it. Me too. Yeah. Failed. Uh, if you succeeded, you take two damage. If you failed, take five. As you are slashed by these blades. Uh, so Skrillex is uh, starting to spark at the joints. And, uh, and you know, he's got the shower of sparks coming in his cockpit. He's going... Arr, arr. <laughs> Tiny consoles are exploding. <laughs> yes. He doesn't have any uh, <laughs> fuses either. <laughs> <laughs> um severe uh so as the as the the blades coming out of the the wheels uh f kind of uh came past uh, it caught her up really really badly um so she falls she falls to the ground call you know calls upon her her abilities and, and and attempts to heal herself for damn it uh too too well all right you guys back up again so first i step in front of severe <laughs> so we don't need severe going down again no uh are, th are they up close now or did they like zoom past they and zoom past off? yeah it looks like they're gonna make a Turned. I'm going to use, I refocus my telekinetic power. Uh, 17 to hit. 11 damage. At whichever uh, one just hit us with the blades. Okay, so yeah, they're both, all three of them on the same bike, so uh, well, if you want to... There are only two of them left? Yeah, one got blasted off, so there's only two riders on the three bike. Uh, if you want to roll to see which one you hit, or just tell me which one you hit, I don't care. First one. Okay. Okay, yeah, you blast him, goes flying off. The guy in the middle is the only one left. He's trying to stabilize the bike now. That's hard for the middle of a three-seat yeah. tandem bike. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Strelix, you're up. With his mech sparking and uh, the everything in the cockpit going sideways, uh, Strelix is like, screw this. <laughs> and he uh, gets up and uh, dives into the vehicle and will start uh, um, tr trying to drive it into the cyclist. Okay. Uh, give me a uh, piloting roll. Two. But, eh, whatever. I'm going to use a hero, my hustle point. Try and re-roll that. That's what I'm talking about. Nine. Yeah. But his, he does not beat you with his three. As he tries to move out of the way, it looks like he almost like runs into it. 
but you just like crunch him right over. I also like to imagine there's that slight like a bug zapper. Yep. As he's as he's stunned and then just <clears throat> falls to the ground and there's a bunch of twisted metal as you run him over. So then I'll bring the car around so that uh, Krieg and Zavir can get in. Okay. First, I'm going to go and get that self-balancing unicycle. Yes. Okay. I'll put it in the back. All right. You've got it now. <laughs> okay. Case we need. It's it's like our little lifeboat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh no! Uh, when you pick it, when you grab it and pick it up, you notice it has like a little switch on it, and if you flip the switch, blades come out where the, where the wheel uh, where the spokes are. Oh, that could come in handy too. All right. So I will put it in uh, in uh, Illumination Boy seat. <laughs> All right. So I know it's like what it, what speed does this vehicle of ours reach? Hmm. Did I figure that out? You can go 95 kilometers an hour. Okay. Wait, before so, we drive away, uh, let's, let, let us grab one of the bodies and inspect it and see if you know, just, just what these things are. Uh, and then we can dump it later if it's of no interest. Uh, okay. Good. We could uh, always inspect I, it here. They looked human enough to me, but I have no objection. If you want to drag a dead body along with us, I just don't see the point. Yeah, I'll 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 strive by, but I, I'm not getting out. You you can go do it. Uh, my systems are on the verge of failure. Well, can is there any maintenance you can do on your? yourself to <laughs> repair the damage? Sure, but not while I'm piloting this vehicle here. Right, I'm just saying maybe we drag a body away and take a little bit of time. Severe can inspect the body. You can conduct whatever repairs you need to conduct. Okay. Works for me. Yep. Yeah. Because uh, I'll be pretty useless out here if I don't have my mech. So, uh, Felix will drive up next to one of the bodies, uh, and then park the car and head into the back to take some space, uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, start, um, getting out of his mech and doing what he can to make repairs. And I'm going to use my scanning sensor to figure out, like, just general things about these bicycles of theirs, like what... What metal is it made of? <coughs> okay. And then I probably ask e either Zavir or Skrillex questions like, how would these people have even gotten here? Because <laughs> I wouldn't know. Yeah, I, I don't got a clue. People survive in harsh conditions. Uh, yeah, but I, wasn't, wasn't this planet uninhabited? I mean, no, there were supposed to be there were supposed to be some people here, but I, I was never sure where they were necessarily. But I, I I don't know what we knew about the planet when we got here. Also, odd that you know. Odd that they would be riding bicycles in this wasteland, but either these bicycles are old or they have some way of making and maintaining them, which seems odd from savages like these. And, uh, you, these things, uh, do they look like they go fast? Well, 
here's something else to consider. If they were riding bicycles up here, that means there must be some way of getting it up and down the plateau. Unless they carried them on their backs. I don't know how you're going to get a three-seater on your back. Well, at least we have a mystery to investigate. And 18 hours of battery life in the vehicle to, to do it and get home. But if the wall of fog is only like five kilometers away, we could probably get home in like, even if we allot an hour, that's 17 hours to investigate or so. Assuming no disruptions. But yeah, I, we would select a body, I guess, and drag it away <laughs> from the wreckage since others may come to inspect the wreckage. Mm -hmm. uh, the bikes are made of like cast iron, so they're pretty heavy. It's pretty low tech, too. So, uh, uh, assuming they have the basic technology needed to smelt iron out of the rocks they could even make cast iron up here on the plateau i don't know that i've seen any iron bearing rocks here but i haven't been looking hi there we and you know this plateau may have may have uh we haven't spent much time on this plateau uh, with a little more investigation perhaps we will find a a vein or a quarry where this iron was made of. Um, I'm go going to uh, inspect uh, the the body that we we have. Uh, I'm going to inspect it, looking, you know, checking, rummaging through their their pockets and and uh, their person was on their person. Um, Checking for um, anything they may be carrying. Checking for like marks, um, birthmarks, tattoos, deformities, scars, um, anything that looks deliberate, or even if it just looks uh, like a passing interest. Okay, so this person's got like. They have got three silver ingots in their pocket. Okay. Um, they have a pouch that's got some rocks. Just you can tell they're just from the ground or whatever. Um, they're very like got splotches all over them. Uh, they look like white splotches. Do they look like um, does it look does it look like a disease white splotch or like it's like um, like a skin condition white splotch? Yeah, uh, you can give me uh, well, you got. Isn't there? Oh shit! Isn't there medicine? No, heal. Yes. Yeah. Nice. That's an eight. It's some version of mange. Um, is this one wearing a? Is this one have a dog mask? Uh, yes, it does have a mask. It's got some cracks in it, but it looks like a dog face. Okay. Um, what kind of dog face? Is it like an Anubis jackal? Is it like a pug? A pug? <laughs> Bulldog? Uh, I recoil upon hearing mange and begin like swatting at my hands like it's going to kill the bugs that cause mange. 
Yeah, kind of like, kind of like the uh, Egyptian jackal. It's got like eyes that they've outlined and got like a long nose, but it doesn't like stick out. It's just formed that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's like porcelain. Um, definitely, uh, definitely would take the mask. Don't take the mask. You said they have mange. It's probably covered in the little mites that eat your skin. We can disinfect it. <laughs> yes, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if we would have antibacterial. I'd assume that there would be some sort of some sort not even, of it's, it's not even a bacteria. It is a literal spider-like mite <laughs> that lays eggs in your skin. <laughs> I meant like alcohol that would kill, kill it, you know? Yeah. I don't even know. I don't even know. Like, you know, they don't bathe dogs in alcohol to kill, kill these mites. They, <laughs> it's a slow process. Well, you, you would probably have some kind of medical disinfectant or something. There's well, always fire. <laughs> I suppose I do not need to take it. Uh, I can use uh, Kevin's, one of his many pads, to take a picture. And that is good enough. Yeah, actually, my uh, survey scanner can take up to 200 hours of video. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we'll just overwrite Kevin teaching karate. <laughs> 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 no, no, that's only that's only like five seconds. So, yeah, I think we'll still overwrite Kevin teaches karate. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, well, yeah. I think mean, by the way, Kevin teaches karate is, I'm sure, the space tube name of this particular video. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin teaches karate is, in in my opinion, the least useful thing on that otherwise blank tape. <laughs> <laughs> so just uh document document um what this looks like um uh, markings uh, in case we run into this in the future so yeah i would uh take a video of them it's filled with like racist commentary about <laughs> These savage beasts that live on this planet <laughs> and their filthy diseases. <laughs> it's probably a good point to take a quick break here. That's all right. Yeah. So you've just examined this body. It's got a porcelain mask. You found three silver. Uh, it gets. <clears throat> um, you notice that. Um, probably not too far away is a spear, and the, the tip of the spear is made of silver. Hmm. Is silver rare? Uh, you've never seen it here. This is a curious. Skrillex, what do you make of, of this silver here? Oh, wait, did you bring it onto the vehicle? Because Skrillex is uh, still working on his uh, Mac. Oh. Well, I assume we, we had to drag the body onto the vehicle and find some safe place to examine it. Uh, I was not aware of it being infested with mites before, but <laughs> too, too late now. Uh, so I assume we just brought it along with us because it was nearby. We just put it in Kevin's seat. But I'll use my scanner to determine if it's like solid silver or if it's just like a thin plating around some more durable metal. Yeah, it's just it's just a thin plating. Maybe it's uh, like evidence of his rank. I assume it's a he as well. Mm -hmm. Perhaps this was the, perhaps this was their leader. Looking up from his repairs, uh, Skrillex would go, makes sense. Hmm. 
I mean, there's not much other reason to silver plate a spearhead if you're going to be using it as a weapon. No. Unless there are werewolves on this planet. <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, if we run, into, we should keep it. If we run into more of them, uh, perhaps we can uh, use it to sway or outrank them in some way, or at least test the theory. We can be uh, fair, fair enough. We can keep the spear. Uh, his other possessions, uh, I assume the silver ingots are some sort of currency that their kind use. I don't know so much about the rocks. They uh, must have some significance to their people, but can't imagine what they would be. They were throwing rocks at us, so it is probably. Oh, does do they look like they're about sling stone size? Mm-hmm. Okay. Are they polished, smooth, or are they just rocks they found? Uh, they look like they don't look smooth. So just sling ammo. I have seen enough. So other than like this leather armor they're wearing, like how well tailored does it look? I'm trying to get a sense of their level of technology. Um, like, is it like they stitch together some hides to, to make animal skin clothing, or does it look like some more machining was done? It was definitely handmade, but it looks like they do have some artisans that know what they're doing, but they're just so worn at this point. So the evidence from the cast iron and the spears and the slings is that these are low-tech people or hipsters who just like everything artisanal. Oh, well, they also had to come from somewhere. I can't imagine it was very far if they were riding these uh, crude instruments around. So we should be on the lookout for more of them or some sort of uh, center nearby. I agree. We should probably begin. Uh, ah, I guess I'm, I'm of mixed feelings on whether or not we even want to encounter their settlement. They seemed immediately hostile for no reason. I can't imagine their settlement will welcome us with open arms. So unless the spear is enough to get them to back off, uh, we'd probably just be drawing a fight. Might be good to, you know, note on a map where it is, though, if nothing else. You could just drive through it, make make them pay for all those lives lost in the wreck. That's true, although with clear head, I now realize I don't understand how they could have made the ship crash. I mean, a couple stones hitting it from the outside probably didn't do it. They don't seem like they have any tech that could bring down a ship like that. So although it did happen right after they started throwing rocks at the ship, I don't know if I should blame them for that. Oh, I didn't say anything about blaming. I said, you know, making them pay for it. It doesn't matter if they actually did it. <laughs> do the, did the ship have like a, do we know if the ship, ship had like a tailpipe? If they like got a stone in the tailpipe, it would have, it would have, it would have blown it up. The bottom of the ship had a button that said "Do not press." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. What's your plan now? We're going to begin a survey of the nearby area. I mean, they, you know, they sent us out here looking for more resources, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe if there's a settlement, then maybe we can observe the people and see how what they're living on. Right. And then uh, ev evict them. Yeah. <laughs> and we also know that we, we know that of, of, of materials, there is at least there is at least iron. And silver. And silver. So seeing if we could find um 
you know, if we could find where those are, you know, where, where those veins might be or where it could have came from. And, you know, I think at this point, um, Xavier would just be mapping um, and just kind of drawing where things are. So we would have something to report back to Mark for. Although like we don't know exactly where we landed. Um, maybe the black box would have some like a more exact trajectory so that we can use that as like a, a starting reference for the map, but. Yeah, I can make sure that data is saved and logged while I, before I uh, repurpose it all. So basically you're looking um, to your east, but right, right up is a sheer wall. It goes up probably 400 meters. And that was the, like, a, it's, you know, similar to a canyon wall with uh, different colors, but that's where the ship attempted to uh, fly, you know, get above and it couldn't, and it crashed into. Uh, if you look out- So is this, is this the wall of another plateau that they slammed into or something else? Um, it, it's or probably not a valley. Yeah, you're probably in a valley. Looking out, if you if you look out to the northwest, you can see black smoke. Um, like and not from the crash ship, but from correct. something else. Something else burning, yes. How far away does it look like the smoke is? Probably about 10 kilometers, so probably about six miles away. Well, if there's a settlement, that might be it. Or smelting for all this iron that they're using. Even better, resources to provide back to the base. Certainly seems like the most obvious thing to go have a look at. We might as well. Okay, so are you going to get your vehicle, head that way? Yep. Mm -hmm. And as we go, guilty pleasure though it is, I will uh, log in to see what the hell Illumination Boy is up to. Because I'm sure he's live blogging something. <laughs> uh, it says no connection. So you are making your way there, getting closer and closer as you're driving um, towards the source of the smoke. There looks to be some kind of settlement in the distance. Um, and as you're driving, you can see twisted pieces of metal sticking out of the ground and you would recognize them as bike pieces. And then every once in a while you'll catch what looks to be a head stuck on one of the pieces of the bike with the mask on it. And sometimes the mask is broken. Uh, is sometimes it, it's just a same, face. The same dog mask? Yeah. So maybe we're coming on a settlement of some creatures that worship a different animal, like cat masks, <laughs> in a perpetual war with the dog masks. What's a dog? It's a four-legged mammal that some humans keep as pets. Oh. They bring comfort in times of distress. I've never understood uh, the purpose of enslaving an animal to your mating or comfort. Seems like an odd thing, but. Uh... Well, it's an ancient thing. Originally, they were bred to help hunt, but as hunting became less prominent, we kept the dogs, lost the behavior of hunting. So uh, miserable, and they're without purpose. 
Well, their purpose has shifted to providing comfort and entertainment. The real mystery is cats, evil foul <laughs> things that do nothing but attack older cats. <laughs> <laughs> You're <gonna> take Cooper. <laughs> I have never understood cats, uh, the animal or the music. So Skrillex, he lifts up the his uh, welding visor. They made a musical based on the movie. <laughs> uh, Skrillex lifts up his uh, welding visor and he has a very serious look on his face, and he said, "I had a." I had a very traumatic experience with a cat. Uh, threw me around a bit. I just barely got away from it. It was claws and teeth. Was was this before you fashioned the Orbeck? No, but you know, I'm not always in the mech, you know? Sometimes I like to walk around a bit. He says this like while he's on like one of those window washing scaffoldings about halfway up the mech. <laughs> <laughs> but cats, they, they apparently don't like being punched repeatedly in the eye. <laughs> so you're headed towards this camp. Yep. You come up to what looks to be like some kind of fence. Uh, they've oh, got by the way, who's wire. driving since uh, Skrillex is uh, working on his, his Mac? Oh, I, I assume we were we waited until you were done working on your Mac before we drove away. Oh, the, the damage that the Mac sustained is going to take a really long time to repair. Like 18 hours worth? <laughs> <laughs> uh... So wait, so wait, the vehicle actually drains battery like a fixed rate, even when it's parked and off. <laughs> that's that's an unfortunate that's an unfortunately designed power system there. In which case we should just go ninety five mile kilometers an hour everywhere we go, since it's all bleeding away at a constant rate, cover the most ground. But uh, okay, if it's going to take eighteen hours and our battery clock is ticking, uh, no, I mean, then uh, I will drive. <laughs> well, I would, I would assume you got the radio on, so I don't know. But no, the battery does not drain while it is not in use. But also, if it's going to take eighteen hours, I probably would drive. Although I have no piloting skill whatsoever, <laughs> so there will be no fancy maneuvering. No quick application of the brakes, or if it is too quick, an application of the brakes. Okay, just gave me a pilot roll then. Oh boy, you hit what some people might call a pothole. Yes. Other people right. might call it a ravine. <laughs> so, what skill would I do? I use for piloting? Go with dexterity. There you Four. go. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Strelix is just. Bouncing around in there trying to do work. This <laughs> year, hitting every pothole along the way. I'm hitting every sh Schwinn part and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh crap! That got stuck. <laughs> you would almost it would you'd almost think that this uh, that big hustling doesn't have any any shocks on it with the way that it's driving. So yeah, leading up to this uh, encampment, you see. Went bicycle parts buried in the ground every once in a while you'll see a head on it and some heads have this uh, dog mask on it and you come up to looks to be like a gate they've got some kind of wire strung around it and there are tents beyond the wire and there's a big crowd of people wearing you know, the same, similar clothes to what you've seen, like kind of leathers and they've got like long cloaks that are all dusty brown and they are all wearing masks, but they are not uh, the dog masks. They look like this. Okay. Are the eye holes open? Yeah.
They look like those uh, Greek theater masks. <laughs> so I, I would warn everyone, possibly theater kids, watch out. So they come out, uh, so they see your vehicle. And well, at this point, probably with like several dog headed skulls buried into it. Yes. <laughs> because I've been yes. running over them. Yes. They notice that, of course. Um, and they come, one of them comes walking up, carrying, uh, looks to be like a spear. He's being covered by somebody who's got like uh, a crossbow. Can I help you? Possibly. We are new to the area and are uh, we're investigating when we were attacked by several dog mask wearing marauders. And he taps his uh, spear on your vehicle. The mongrels, you took care of some. Worthless. You. I agree. They appear to be covered in uh, mange. They're disease ridden. In any event, since we're in the area, we were thinking about stopping, possibly seeing what supplies we could pay for and uh, getting more information about how much of a threat these dog mask wearing freaks might be. Give me a talk roll. Meanwhile, uh, Skrillex uh, climbs <clears throat> over by Zavir uh, and Seven. kind of he uh, he taps Sabir and is like, they, sp they speak our language. It is surprising. Uh, but uh, savages can always uh, surprise you in ways that you least expect. You can see he's like eyeballing your vehicle. Come on in. How do you s speak our language? How My, did you how did you come to this place? I've always lived here. I speak it with your mouth like I, like you do. I drive on as soon as he opens the gate. Yeah, they open the gate. You start rolling through <coughs> this camp. Uh you would estimate that there's probably a hundred to two hundred of them here. Uh you notice that they have vehicles as well. They are short, like uh, ATV-like type vehicles with roll bars, and they have put like chain link on them, and they've got they've put spikes all over them, and they're all like working on them. And as your vehicle rolls by, they all just kind of stop what they're doing and watch it go by. Does it co compared to the vehicles that we see? Does it does ours look superior? Oh yeah. We must be careful. These, uh, we clearly have the better car. Big hustling will have a reputation, and uh, I can see that others may be a little jealous of such things. I agree. We'll have to keep an eye on the on the car while we're here. Yeah, I'm gonna put off the rest of my repairs till later, and Skrillex is gonna enter his mech. So you pull into like a. a circle area there's a bunch of 55 gallon drums that have been piled up and you can see that the fire is basically from some sort of uh oil oil well that they've got going um and they there's a big crowd of them they start walk coming over to the vehicle they all move aside as, as one seems to, uh, he's got like flair on his mask, so he's probably in charge. So he comes over. This is nice. What brings you to our settlement? I am Smutty, leader of the Cutters. I believe we met one of your people before. 
Uh, we are exploring the area around here. We're new to the region and uh, we're recently attacked by some sort of dog mask wearing group. The mongrels. If, yes. If that's, if that's what they're called. It's a fitting name. Uh, do you know them? We kill them. We do not wish to know them. I mean, they attacked us, but why would they attack you? What do you? What is your, your beef with the Mongols? They do not like us. Well, we have that in common. Is there a uh, place we can go and trade? We'd like to buy whatever supplies you can afford to spare. Supplies? So where are you, you know, from? Uh, we're from a different part of the world, at least three or four days' drive away. Why do you not wear a mask? Well, uh, in where we're from, it's not traditional to wear a mask unless you're you know, within a certain range of the primary settlement. He kind of looks at a couple of his uh, other his followers like, don't get any ideas. Okay. Let's, uh, why don't you come to my tent? Let's talk what you need. Sounds good. So uh, <laughs> I will roll up the window and, <laughs> and turn turn to Zvir and Skrillex and say uh, pretty sure we need to leave somebody with the, with the vehicle. You have seen my use in combat. That's true. I guess you should come with me then. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Although I... Skrillex is also uh, already taking some damage. I have one hit point. Is there anything, is there anything I can, uh, I know I am no uh, mechanic, but is there anything that uh, I could do to uh, help your, your encasing? Oh, you made my mech. Yes, yes, your, your shell of yourself, your mech. Um, or if you were battered at all in the course of the fighting, I'm sure... Severe could help more readily with that. I mean, Skrillex does have a number of uh, bumps and bruises from all the uh, the shocking movements of the, the cabin. So if you had some capacity to heal, he would appreciate it. Would that help your actual hit points? Yeah. Okay. Then, yeah, I would... I, I would uh, guess touch your mech and it would probably go through. Um, <laughs> I heard that one a hundred times. <laughs> yeah. uh, you get to heal seven hit points. So I'm back up to max. Um, and you take one system strain. Okay. Oh, that feels very nice. Thank you, Sabir. It is my pleasure. I was a little concerned for I have capacity to heal. But uh, I want to make, <laughs> I was a little concerned about you, as I don't know what sort of healing works best for you, but now this is good. So when, when uh, Strelix takes a system strain, does it come out like a, in, in the form of like acne or something? Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> So I will, uh, I'm going to get out of the car and I'm, I would say to Skrillex, now if you have to leave the vehicle, remember, put the club over the steering wheel first. Right, you brought it this time. <laughs> will do. And Come with me. And I will follow that guy. Okay. Uh, he leads you past the crowd, just kind of move out of the way to a, a, a tent that they open up for him and he's got some... Uh, uh, like a piece of uh, carpet rug on the ground and a, some pillows and he's got like a nice chair that he sits in. 
you have a cozy, a bulb. So how long has have your people had this settlement? Thousand years. Thousand years. I didn't know there were settlements so old as that anywhere in this world. Mm -hmm. Where did your people come from before that? From the stars, of course. Well, I'm glad to hear that, as when we came in, uh, we asked a question to one of the gate guards who suggested that you had always been here, as we were curious as to how, given that we're from so many kilometers away, uh, we still managed to speak exactly the same language. Well, uh, some are not as uh, astute. It, I was going to say educated. But... Yes. So you have a nice vehicle. You are not um, part of the porcelain prince. No, in fact, I don't know what the porcelain prince is. He is our sworn enemy. He has taken from us what we rightly deserve. And that and, is uh, the throne, of course. The palace that he resides in. Palace. Yes. Uh, we don't know who the porcelain prince is. Uh nor where this palace might be. Certainly we have no desire. Is he in some way related to these mongrel people? No. Hmm. no these, he is not. These mongrels wear porcelain uh, dog, dog face masks. Is, what is the significance of the, this porcelain? It is the way of this land. Do you, do are there masks porcelain? Yes. And you are not berserkers either. No, all of your customs in this region are strange to us, as I'm sure ours will be strange to you. And I noticed that you had many parts and pieces from mongrel machines on your vehicle, so you have encountered no. them. Yes, immediately hostile. We don't generally kill the first people. We try to live in harmony to the extent we can, but obviously they were hostile from the first moment and not really worthy of mercy. Then we shall... What supplies do you need? Maybe we, you speak of a trade, we will trade then. Well, uh, at the moment, I don't know that we have a desperate need for any particular supplies, but we're always interested in finding new sources of water, food, metal. What does your community typically trade? Fuel. Fuel for your vehicles? Yes. What sort of uh, fuel do your vehicles use? Power cells? No. Hydrocarbons? No. Black gold. Don't know what of black gold. So he uh, points to one of the people in the in the tent, and they leave and come back, and and with a, like a big metal bucket with some kind of black oily substance that he shows you. Black gold. So I'll take out my scanner, which has proved much more useful than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> and confirm that it's, uh, well, it's oil of some kind, but if they've refined it at all or if it's just crude oil direct out of the ground. Yeah, it's just crude. Ah. Uh, uh, we are aware of this substance, uh, although we don't refer to it as black gold, where I'm from. Interesting that you can make your cars run on this. Obviously, it burns. I suppose anything that burns could be a source of fuel. Uh, occasionally, people use it to light lamps and things like that, where I'm from. 
I, I, I have no doubt that uh, if the people back home knew that there was a, a goodly supply of it, or maybe there's something they could do with, with this substance. But congratulations to you and your people for making it useful, as otherwise it's mostly a pollutant. Looks at you quizzically when you mention the word pollutant. Paul, you don't. Yeah, and I think back wistfully to the delightful bracing <laughs> eye sting. Yes, so there was Sindu. a constant, <laughs> constant <laughs> presence on Sindhu. <laughs> well, these uh, you look for resources, and uh, if you do not need our black gold, you look for resources, and they are kept by the porcelain prince. Maybe you uh, assist us with your skills and vehicle. We will raid and take what is rightfully ours. Possibly. I'm, I'm not averse to talking about that. Uh, I think we would need to know more about this porcelain prince. Sounds, you know, if he's taken what is rightfully yours, then presumably he is... Uh, at least to some degree, a formidable enemy. He is. He just seems skilled. How did he take your palace? And how long ago was this? Hundreds of years. Hundreds. Mm. What sort of uh, armies does he use? to defend his position. Uh, he again points to, you know, nods to one of his people. They leave the tent, they come back and they return with a rifle. It looks like a bolt action rifle. These weapons he uses. But does he have, does he also use black gold powered vehicles the way you do? Yes. And how many vehicles does he have relative to the number that you could muster? He has five or six, but they are large, like yours, maybe bigger, with weapons on them. What sorts of weapons? Weapons like these, firearms. Yes, yes, and crossbows, large crossbows that would punch through your vehicle. So large crossbows, like with the fire bolts that are three, four feet long. Mm-hmm. So when your people came here from the stars, what? How did they arrive? By what means? They, in the text, it just says that they arrived. There was no description. I think we'd be interested in seeing these texts. Learning more about your people. I think I would also like to scout out this palace. Before we agree to help you, I, I don't want to agree to get into a fight that is going to definitely get us killed. Some risk of being killed is obviously going to uh, arise as a result. Yes. Fair. That's, that's a fair assessment. I do not wish to lead you into something to your demise. So could you, do you have maps? Could you show us where this palace is? and where we might go to observe it, hopefully without being captured by the uh, porcelain prince. Or just in, in, in general, um, since we are new to this area. So it would be useful to have a map for, for just, we just have our own eyes, uh, own eyes uh, to help us through the dust. I will um, I will have them furnish a map for you. What is the farthest you have ever your people have 
ever run from this city. We have crossed the bridges before. We have been down to the to, to the purgatory mist. What is this purgatory mist? It is the what separates the worlds between the living and the dead. What is this world? The living, obviously. Oh. I see. I'm blanking on the guy's name again. What was the guy who was... Spunk. Oh, oh Spunk. Keep, my mind keeps going elsewhere. This time I was like, was it... I know it's not smutty because <laughs> I got that wrong last time and that's this guy now. Yeah. Uh, so Maybe I was like, was, was it was it Scabies? I don't remember. <laughs> Scabies. That's the guy behind Smutty. <laughs> yeah. That's the second in command is Scabies. Or well, that should be the leader of the Mongols. I mean, I mean the, uh, yeah. But I would, I would uh, whisper to Zavir, uh, Spunk did say that he thought he was in purgatory after they hurled him through that wall of mist mm. so apparently it is a place where they exile people interesting that, uh, that makes sense so smutty uh, if we can get a copy of that map we will go and see what we can figure out about this prince of yours we'll then return with our answer about whether or not we will join you in a fight against him if we do we would want to then talk about possibly opening up trade between our distant settlement and your people on a more permanent basis. Obviously, you have great skill in metalwork. So do we, but I am sure we can find a way to profitably trade between our two groups of people. When we do, I would also start asking them questions about like, how much metal do they produce in a year? Does he think like, where are their minds? What's your per capita export of iron, what? iron and silver? What is your GDP here? <laughs> How much wealth can we actually steal from you? Right. Are there any other valuables you may have that you could point out on this map? Where do you fall on the <laughs> supply and demand curve? <laughs> if you can see my little cursor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you guys, the crash was down here. 5k from the mist fog uh that's the wall the sheer wall uh you came up here 10k up to the raider camp he he has marked these different raider camps uh between them and um the berserkers the mongrels don't really have a camp uh these are uh, lakes he calls them the Silver Lake. So this is burnt wood, which is basically a bunch of, looks like a burnt out forest, just burned out trees. Uh, he mentions that this is some kind of catapult thing or whatever, that they throw the people into purgatory that uh, the porcelain prince captures. I mean, uh, if you're going to have a, a mass transport system, why not be a catapult? Uh, this is the main road that crosses the bridge that goes to the Porcelain Prince. There are other bridges. They're not as stable. Uh, the main one is heavily guarded. Uh, this is a large canyon here and some more sheer walls. Okay. So it looks like the Porcelain Prince is a pretty good distance away. Like uh, thirty kilometers from the wall, or something. Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably thirty kilometers from the bridge. Yeah, and you guys would be probably, 10, 20, probably thirty. So, probably thirty to the bridge, and another another thirty to him. So, like a total of sixty k. And these raiders, just I, I'm not sure I understand. I assume from the name Raider that they are not allied with Smutty. Uh, 
no, I just wrote them like this is his camp, so it really should be uh should be cutter here. This is his camp. Uh this one is a berserker camp. Here's another berserker camp, and he had there's another cutter camp down here. Oh, so I would ask him then uh when we do attack the porcelain prince, I assume the it, that it's only the cutters who would be we would be fighting with, not the Berserkers or the other one. Or do you all have a grievance against the Porcelain Prince? We all have a grievance, but we can never seem to fight together. Uh, the Berserkers will not help us. What was the other one? Berserkers and what? A and the Mongrels. Oh, okay. Well, I... I still would suggest it might be worth it if, uh, again, if if this attack is going to be launched, I wouldn't want you to engage with the Porcelain Prince. Your people would be, your forces would be attacked and weakened in the combat. And then the Berserkers might then mm -hmm. come up from behind and attack you now that you're weak, realizing that they can then take over what you've just captured it might be worth it to try to get them to side with us, if only to send them in first and let them weaken themselves. Mm. I mean, I leave that to you, though. Obviously, we're from so far away that whatever territory is taken, none of it goes to us. Uh, so it's really down to, do you think you can trust the Berserkers to not attack you after the fight with us? Maybe uh, you should speak to them on my behalf. They see me, they will try to fight. Yeah, I think I, I, we could possibly do that. I don't know that I am the most eloquent person. How did your fight with the Berserkers start then? As I may need to know that. Do not get along. Is it, it uh, is, sorry, go on. It is territorial. Did, did they used to claim some ownership of the uh, the castle? Yes, of course. They believe that they should be at the palace, but it doesn't belong to them. Did they own it at one point or inhabit it? I think that uh, at one time that they squatted there. Well, it may be that what we would need to do is, before attacking the Porcelain Prince and asking him, that we will need to have your side and the Berserkers come to some agreement. Like I said, I don't know the nature of the disagreements between you, so I can't imagine we could ally with them without first discussing who will get what if we are successful. And I certainly can't decide what you'd be willing to give them for their participation in the combat. Uh, some sort of summit would be necessary between you and a leader from their side or a representative you appoint. It doesn't have to be you personally, but we can, we can worry about the details of that after we see what the porcelain prince will be defending himself with and we make our decision. Very well. This is bridge. Uh, lots of guards. Yes. Yeah. What, what, uh, what sort of weapons do they have? Is it these, these, and he point. I point to the bolt action rifle. Yep. Or and the crossbow. Oh, oh yeah. I see. So I will again turn to Zavir and say, uh. Obviously, the crossbows might be a problem since they're going to be on the order of, you know, the size of a trebuchet, apparently. But uh, it might make some sense to armor our vehicle up some more to deal with at least the uh, rifle fire. That said, I'm not sure what we'll find locally other than maybe cast iron, which might be heavier than it's worth. Is our vehicle susceptible to rifle, rifle fire at the moment? 
Like, does do attack level three dam weapons do damage to our vehicle? Uh, good question. I mean, it's not exactly power armor. <laughs> no. Yeah, it isn't. But I'm just curious because if it's a metal thing and like you're just like you know, bullets are kind of it does have an it does have some armor plating. Right. That that much I got, but I still assume that like it's also got glass windows on it that were shattering from sling stones. So <laughs> if sling stones are hitting our windows and coming through. Presumably bullets will as well. And that's not even like, what if they have, what if, what if the bolt action rifle covers a wide range of things that they could have a fairly high caliber fired from a bolt action rifle that might still poke a hole in, in our vehicle. Right. And even if they like, okay, so setting aside the fact that maybe they could shoot through the doors, which would be a problem worse than that would be they penetrate the engine block and then we're just, sitting in the middle of a cage on their bridge unable to move yeah makes sense oh. well we should go uh we will have to inspect the bridge first to make sure that it, we think we can cross it uh if not, we'll have to make some modifications to our vehicle to make it easier for us to fight our way across the bridge if that's what we have to do. So we will go. Our vehicle did take a little bit of damage fighting with the mongrel people. We should probably go and inspect that. We may need to make some repairs before we leave your village. And then we will report back to you in, uh, I don't know, a day or two. Okay. Assuming we need to uh, modify our vehicle, add additional armor to it, who would we talk to about buying metal? Uh, I can provide if you wish to do that. Very well. And so I'll get up with Severe and go back to the vehicle. So uh, yeah, before you leave, they hand he hands you. Um, well, he doesn't. But one of his servants hands you like a like a vase of some. Um, he says it's uh, some water um, and a couple look like skinned rats or something that they've caught. So they hand you like three of those. Alive skinned? No, they're dead. food for you uh, for my guests and water oh. you are very generous thank you um, one quick question before we we, we head out um, you got I we have seen lots of lots of, of, of iron from where does this iron come from It used to come from the south, and now the porcelain prince controls it. The south. So on your map, the uh, the cloud that leads to purgatory was looked like it was south. I don't know where which direction was north. Yeah, uh, basically he says that the old camp that. They have a camp in the south, and they used to do like some kind of smelting, but it got all, they ran out of resources and it was damaged. So they don't do that anymore there. Um, but the porcelain so that prince. other cutter camp? Uh, well, it is their camp. The, uh, yes, I'm sorry. Yes, you're correct. It is the other cutter camp, yeah. Did so the, then we would head, head back and fill in Skrillex. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's like six or eight of these cutters just kind of staring at the vehicle, looking at it. They move out of your way as you come back. Get in and roll up the windows again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and inform, inform Skrillex of this guy's offer. I would say seems a little forward. 
new people roll into town and you're immediately like, hey, you want to fight to the death with my enemies? Uh, yeah, we're not, we're not <laughs> fighting to no, no one's death. What, what do they say and we get in return for this? Presumably that, we, we didn't negotiate that with them, but presumably if we determine it's possible to defeat this prince at all, we would have to discuss with them what we would get for it. Can't be nothing, obviously, that would be silly. But so we didn't discuss this. Value? Well, we know that the porcelain prince has iron reserves. I mean, my perspective, we just take this information back to General... Uh, Marquar. What is it? Marquar. Marquar. General Marquar and... Uh, and, you know, they could just nuke this from orbit. <laughs> I mean, I, I agree that we've gotten enough information here that we should return back with it. Because if we get ourselves killed trying to cross the bridge, uh, then all of what we've learned will be unknown to the main settlement. And so that's not good. But I have a feeling that Marquar is going to send us out anyway to do additional reconnaissance Possibly because he's hoping we get killed on the bridge. <laughs> what do you mean he's trying to? He's hoping we get killed. We're we're useful. Yes. Why would he try to kill me? I have done nothing but good things for Sindum. Well, my original thought was that it was all a ploy to kill Kevin, but now Kevin's not here. So, I'm not sure why <laughs> Marquar wants us all dead. I mean, I, 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 I mean, I think most people at some point want to kill Kevin. But then, you know, <laughs> you, he, he kind of grows on you. <laughs> right, like a fungus. Yes. Yes, and in, 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 in the parts that uh, are dying, he, he grows these weird mushrooms. I'm just saying, I wouldn't be surprised, especially if he can send us with Kevin, if he eventually sends us to assault that bridge. I mean, I think... If, wait, if, if wait, that... wait, who's Kevin? You mean Illumination Boy? Yes. Yes. His real name is Kevin, but he does call himself Illumination Boy. I refuse to call him Illumination Boy. But he's a superhero. <laughs> so I mean, he's got a channel and everything. I think every time we come back to camp and we have Kevin with us, we will have to go back out again. Well, like I said, I'm not giving my life up for some uh, hillbilly rock farmers. So, uh... well, I mean, I certainly would have, so far, I would say. These are people who are riding around using hydrocarbon fuel in their vehicles. The worst thing they have is either very large crossbows or basic, basic chemical propelled firearms. Oh, that's... Uh, it, right. Maybe the porcelain prince guy that you're talking about is the one that took out the big old transport. That's possible. Which is uh, more reason why Marquar might want information on him. Uh, I'd say we just go back and let Marquar sort it out. If he wants to send uh, us, then, you know, he can send us. But at least this time we can have a transport and an army and resources. Yeah, that sounds like Marquar. He'll definitely send a platoon <laughs> <laughs> armed with laser rifles under our command. So I agree. I agree. We should go back to the settlement. Creed, 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 buddy, you forget. He's got all these people that he needs to take care of. So it's a win-win for him. Either he gets the resources or he reduces the people. As long as it's not one of us. <laughs> That sounds like it's a pretty good pitch for him, then. So we fire up the vehicle. Uh, uh, I say we head back. 
This is we could report we could report on where the where our transport went down. So there's I mean if nothing else there's salvage value there, uh, although obviously not as good as the transport coming back unharmed. Nothing we can do about that now. Uh, and we can get them the intel on the savages that live out here in the wasteland. And we have the map. Right, and we have a map. Do you, uh, do you keep the food and drink that he gave you? For now? <laughs> like, we're, we're still within his settlement. I don't want to throw away his uh, disgusting rats and filthy water yet. But, I mean, as soon as we're out of the settlement, <laughs> yeah. So, but the uh, the plate that the food was given and the the uh, the container of water actually have like blues and yellow colors in it. It's like ceramic, mm -hmm. so it kind of stands out. The fact that everything else here is brown and with all the dust. So, uh, yes. so. Maybe we'll save the plate and the urn <laughs> because it looks like maybe they might have some trade value if we have to deal with these people again. Okay. So you proceed. And, to and actually, and that is smart anyway because if we have to deal with Smutty again, uh, we'll be able to return him his plate, his obviously valuable plate and urn, and not let him know we just dumped it because we don't trust that they even know to boil water. Uh, okay. I am not getting Paradise Loss's revenge because I drank the water. <laughs> so it is, so, uh, it is 15 kilometers. Remember, if somebody offers you a drink, never take ice cubes with it because... <laughs> It is um, 15 kilometers back to, well, 10 kilometers back to the crash site and then another five kilometers back to the mist if you wish to go that way. Yep. Okay. So you make your way past the crash site as it's still smoldering, past the broken pieces of the, the mongrels or as they've been come to know, the Schwinites. Uh, no one else is out here and you begin to enter you come right up to the mist I mean I would suggest we drive by the catapult we know where it is from the map okay um yeah it's a little bit over yeah it's it's probably a little bit over 10 kilometers so it's um it's like seven miles away. All right. That sounds good to me. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you come across this giant catapult. Um, and you can see there's looks to be a couple people like hanging out here. They've got like a tent set up and they're like sleeping right nearby it. I have to admit, it's sort of impressive that uh, Spunk survived being hurled by a catapult of that size through the mist into the other side. Seems like uh, that would kill most people. They, um, as you drive up, you can see that these people kind of get up and grab their stuff and they just kind of run off uh, into the distance. And the catapult savages. Is, just, is just sitting there. All right, so uh, we we done sightseeing, Krieg? Yep. All right. So um, could I set my mech on autopilot to drive the car while I look at the... Um, the black box and I figure that way we can maybe get some information about bearings and and stuff to see what path the transport took from base 
Right. Also, it is uh, a good that you reminded me. We should definitely get uh, anything you want to get off of that box. Uh, we should get all of the data off of it beforehand because if we turn up and we can't hand him a copy of all of the information that black box contains, Markar is going to want the black box and you're not going to want to give it to him. And there's going to be a lot of, uh, I don't know if your species cries, but whatever the equivalent of tears is. <laughs> More acne. <laughs> we secrete mucus from our skin pores. Uh, it's going to be very messy in that room then. <laughs> Yeah. If his people are trying to rip the black box out of your hands or your mech's hands. That is a good point, Craig. So uh, I'll try to start uh, downloading the information to the um, my mech's built-in compad while the mech is driving. Okay. Uh, give me a program roll. Nine. So the information from the black box, uh, you pick up that uh, left the camp, uh, the direction that you went from the camp, uh, the speed, the altitude, uh, and when you pick up, and then all of a sudden, uh, there's nothing. Like the data has been, it's gone. Um, and it returns and you pick up uh, as you, so basically when you were in the mist, there was no uh, data or anything being recorded. It was gone. It, it just didn't record anything and it picked it up once it, it left the mist. And then you pick up everything, some sort of uh, power fluctuations, power loss, uh, all kinds of stuff like that. And then the inevitable uh, crash. Would any of this data, um, even though it does seem like uh, maybe not related uh, between what happened to cause the ship crash as well as what was going on to the fog, could, could uh, Skrillex analyze it to kind of determine, you know, because maybe if the fog created electromagnetic interference and that prevented the recording or if there was some kind of uh, um, other things that suggest whether a weapon was used or if it was a, a computer programming issue like a virus or anything like that. Um, it doesn't appear to be a, a weapon your guess would be something in the fog caused the malfunctions and caused the ship to crash. Okay. So that makes Skrillex a little bit more hesitant to go into the fog. Uh, and he uh, relays this to Zavir and Craig. So, um, I, I'm, I'm analyzing the data on this recorder and uh, it's probably some kind of phenomenon going on in the fog that led to the ship's issues. So we need to be very careful as we go into it, especially since my whole survival relies on my mech remaining functional. Well, Spunk seemed fine. And he got fired from a catapult through it. Right. Well, catapults work on, you know, Newton's laws and all that stuff. Uh, very less complication in terms of vectors, velocity, force, when, than uh, when you're dealing with a thousand ton metal creations flying through the air, making micro adjustments for flight and all that stuff. Well, I mean, I'm happy to have you drive as carefully as you like through it, but it seems like we have to go through it one way or another. No, I know. I'm just saying, uh, it's, uh, I don't know. Pray. Pray if you got it. 
And, and I was, as I was suggesting, I suspect uh, Zavir and I will be fine. The, the, ve- <laughs> the, the, the you know, uh, our, our vehicle and your mech may be adversely affected by it. So I take your point. Well, Zavir, I'm going to ride in your pocket if things go sideways. Well, you always have a space in my left cup. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> uh, and then uh, Skrillex will climb back up into uh, his mech and then start manually piloting the mech to pilot the car. All right. So you begin to enter the uh, fog, mist? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're about uh, 30 seconds in, and the car starts to sputter like there's power fluctuations. Do these power fluctuations happen with my mech as well? Give me an exert roll. What should I modify it with? You pick something. I don't care. Tell me how you use it. All right. I'm I'm going to exert my brain. There we go. Use your brain. Solve the situation and manage the power flow issues. That's right. Like Krieg can flex his abs. Uh, I got an eight. So. Um. The mech seems to handle the autopilot for about a minute, and then it starts to, you can see it flickering. And oh, at this point, I was uh, doing it manually. Okay. So, yeah, you've got, uh, you're switching knobs and, and trying to do all kinds of stuff in there. And uh, it's just uh, one, you know, like one system will go down, you fix it, and then two will go down, you'll fix those, and then it just becomes a cascade. You just can't keep up with it. Okay. And eventually, the vehicle just comes to a stop as everything is shut down. But is his mech shut down? Uh, about 30 seconds later, his mech stops, too. Yeah. Um, so as the car is sputtering, I would at least... <laughs> I, I don't know if, if there's an equivalent to this, but I would at least yell to uh, put it in neutral so we could at least push it. Because I would hate to lose the big hustling after spending two hustle points on it. <laughs> yeah. Um, you, you say that, but the mech doesn't respond. It's kind of like when in Pacific Rim, when uh, the that one kaiju released the EMP and striker Eureka just kind of went, Whoop. I don't actually know much about that movie. I saw it once, but I don't remember it. I've seen it like <laughs> amazing. It was so disappointing. The movie started, the, the first one set up such an amazing, amazing world and story. And the second one turned it into Power Rangers with kids who die. Disappointed. So, anyway. I remember the first one as being okay. Like, it was, I didn't want my money back. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. For me, it's one of my favorites. It's probably, probably uh, Pacific Rim, Aliens, Army of Darkness, slash Evil Dead, uh, and then. Maybe Deadpool. Anyways, so... So then, after you fail to put the car in neutral, I would at least then, as you are sputtering, I would yell, then get out of the seat so that I can put it in neutral and don't have to fight my way around your giant-ass mech. (laughs) And then your mech goes down and is immobile. So now we can't put the car in neutral because you're in the way. And we've lost the big hustling forever, and we have to walk home. So I start punching the mech. <laughs> <laughs> so, start dinging it up pretty good. 
probably more just hurting my hand. Mm. <laughs> but nonetheless. <laughs> well, the mech's not made of top grade iron or steel, just, you know, the junk that Skrillex could find. But uh, probably after about five minutes, uh, you see like a hatch at the top of it pop open and Skrillex covered in, well, sweat and mucus. Uh, pulling, uh, climbing up out of the top of it, breathing hard. Son of a bitch. <laughs> I get out, slam the door, go to the back door, open it up, pull out the fucking unicycle. <laughs> <laughs> all right there's no way we could jam this car into neutral um i don't know does it does a car have like gear shifts and stuff like that or is it like electric all electric in terms uh, of it i'm uh, sure it's it's not electric yeah, I'm surprised uh, to hear it's not like that. It, I would have assumed it was basically a manual or a, an automatic transmission, if it had a transmission as we understand it at all. Like, I don't really think manual is going to survive a hundred years. It'll survive another 20, 30, certainly, just because there are old people like me who kind of like a manual transmission. But yeah. Kind of like okay. people were lamenting how movie theaters are dying. And I was like, whoa, but if you think about it, someday movie theaters were going to die. Yeah. It's just surprising it's on our watch. <laughs> True. <laughs> um, so it is automatic. So Skrillex. The, the question is, is there like a fixed thing we can do to disengage the transmission from the wheels so that we can get the wheels to spin freely? I'm sure there's always a roll you can make. Uh, Skrillex can, uh, he'll, he'll climb down from his mech and he can talk somebody through it, but he doesn't have the capacity to manipulate anything now. So maybe. Yes. maybe Xavier could uh, try uh, um, and, and just exert, like throwing her body into it. How tall is Skrillex outside of his mech? Somewhere between four and six inches. So like, I can imagine, like we got this like five inch creature who's giving orders to the to beings that are like much, much taller, like giant size. Put your back <laughs> into it. <laughs> Yeah, I would probably, and Skr Skrillex would probably be giving those instructions from the floor, not trusting to actually stand or uh, be on top of anybody. Bad experiences with that in the past. So, I mean, I'm willing to roll a fixed skill using, I, I assume we would get an extra die because yep. Skrillex is shouting commands at us. Yes. To try to disengage whatever the transmission is. Okay. Yes. So you, maybe we could save the big hustling. Yes, you need a six. Uh, okay, the extra die is going to matter. Because <laughs> I got a five. As long as I don't roll a one. Okay, I got a three on that. So that is... Uh, Seven. Yeah, plus. it's it's eight total. Okay. Yep. And then we have to exert ourselves to push the thing along. Right. <laughs> yeah. So which you're pushing back out of the mist? Yeah. Well, we're pushing. I assume we're pushing through the mist to get to the side we want to be on with our settlement. Uh, Skrillex would say, no, no, we can't do that. 
We need to get out of the mist. We need to figure out what's going on so we can try and shield this vehicle and my mech from whatever's causing this electrical disruption. Well, the mist is only like 100 feet wide, right? Or 100 meters? I thought it was bigger than that. They fired a guy through it with a catapult and he lived. <laughs> I, I got the sense it was only like you know a hundred meters wide or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean the the disc, yeah, in the mist is presumably about a hundred meters. Oh, okay, that's not too bad. So it's like so we made it. We made it like thirty seconds in. Really, we should have just sped up to like ninety-five kilometers an hour and just let the momentum <laughs> carry us. <laughs> but that's uh, that's for next time, I guess. <laughs> Or speed up, there you go. That's how we should have done it. We should have sped up to 95 kilometers an hour and then turned everything off and just let the momentum <laughs> carry us yeah. through. Turn everything back on on the other side. <laughs> um, <laughs> them yes, so, boys. <laughs> well, while you guys are pushing the car, Skrillex will be on top of the car going, mush, mush. <laughs> Put your backs into it. <laughs> He has got little man syndrome. So you're, are, are you going to be a lot easier if we pulled your mech out and left it here? And over my cold, dead body. <laughs> that could be arranged. <laughs> Relic suddenly looked a little bit more concerned. <laughs> <laughs> so are you pushing it out or through? Through. Okay. So, both of you are behind the vehicle pushing it? Yep. Mm -hmm. Where's Strelix? I'm on top. On the, I'm on the mush. Uh, give me a, a notice roll, Skrillex. Oh, boy. We got some Schwinites after us, I bet. Probably a whole gang of those unicycle fucks. Six. You're on top. Do, do you have any kind of special vision, of the, uh, or is that only in the mech? Oh, that's only in the mech. Okay. So you're looking and uh, like telling them to mush and, and everything, and you realize uh, you start to see uh, a wide open chasm in front of you. So Skrillex would run up to the front of the car, make sure that he's seeing what he thinks he sees, and then run to the back and start shouting, no, 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 stop. What is it? I mean, I wouldn't stop pushing on no, 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 because I would not know what you were telling me not to do. But on stop, I guess I would stop pushing. Okay. So at Let's... that point, we've got a car that's no longer got a transmission engaged. It would roll at least uh, a couple of feet. I don't know how heavy it is. <laughs> it's it's not going to stop pushing the moment we stop pushing. It's not going to stop rolling, I mean, the moment we stop pushing. So, does... And you're on it, so if it goes <laughs> over... <laughs> does Skrillex go down with the boat? <laughs> We will find out the next time we play. We will stop right there. <laughs> Excellent. So just so so now if my character and, you, and your mech's inside, no matter what. I'm make a new character. <laughs> your mech's inside because you refuse to let me pull it out and leave it behind. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is good. We're, we'll lose a character or two every session. <laughs> Level two. Level two. Eventually, we'll be able to regrow. Still, still, still got to regrow limbs and heads. That's the that's the goal here. Although. It may just roll right off, and then Dr. Henry and Lumination Boy will be at the bottom, and we'll see if they get out of the way. 
<laughs> you know what? Because Skrillex probably has a lower terminal velocity than the Jeep, he would be a few seconds behind, and maybe one of them can see him and catch him. Maybe Illumination Boy can actually pull off some heroics without exploding me. Yes, pick. You can either catch Big Hustlin' or Strillix. Pick which one. <laughs> so the thought occurred to me that um, since Skrillex's mech is a vehicle of sorts, is that does Skrillex put like bumper stickers on like the mech's ass? Because uh, like you should put one that says Big Hustlin' too. <laughs> or backdoor boogie yes <laughs> next time we're we're back in uh town that that's what we're gonna be doing Skrillex is gonna well he might have he might not have a mac, mac to put a bumper sticker on okay i mean the good news is if i see you going over the edge uh it is possible i can just sort of telekinesis you into the air to prevent you barely you from do going... a marble. No, no, no. I can't do two marbles. I can do like <laughs> I can do like four hundred and forty pounds if I'm only focusing on one object. The second object makes end any success impossible. Well, at least there's that. Like I, but there's no saving big hustling if it goes over the side. No. <laughs> if we're able to save it, or I guess if we're able to save it, or we have to get another another vehicle, because it seems like that's the right. law of the land. Right. Um, even if even if we can save it, it's stuck here forever. If we can't push it through, we not much we can do with it. So the only main out. reason, right? Well, the main reason to save it is to save the mech. Yeah, I mean, we could push it out. It still lasts like eighteen hours, like dep depending if like. Well, but I think it I think it was sputtering out the way the ship was. I don't know that it's going to function once it's out. Just like the the ship didn't automatically recover and crashed when it got out. Well, I mean, it was like in a downward trajectory. It's a little bit different rather than just being like flat and not moving. Yeah, I guess we'll find out next time. Well, assuming we could save the vehicle at all. But um, I, I think, I think, uh, I'll definitely want to barter for some bumper stickers. I mean, if this is, if this is a land of, a land of like vehicles, I bet the bumper sticker trade is like, is off top the notch, hook. Top notch. Yeah. And that's how you know, like, who's the, who's the coolest mm -hmm. is like, which bumper stickers they have. Uh, on the other hand, if if we could, you know, maybe there'll be stuff that uh, Skrillex will be interested in salvaging from Big Hustlin', like the shock bumper. So when you build your new mech. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll have shock fists. <laughs> your new mech will be made entirely out of recycled Schwinn pieces. <laughs> <laughs> They'll think it's like some sort of god and they'll worship it. <laughs> that was fun. Good. It was. Yeah, it's an interesting, interesting, uh, interesting world. And uh, adventure so far. Good. Yeah, it's been fun. I had to come up with something, especially with two people missing. That's yeah, I have no idea how they're going to. Uh, that'll be some convenient plotting that they find us. Because <laughs> I am. <laughs> what do you mean? Sindhu's got their own catapult. Here they come. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, like, they, so the settlement only had, like, the one shuttle. So I don't even know how they get to this side of the, the fog cloud. Like you, like you said, maybe they're just at the bottom of the trench already. <laughs> Making their way up. <laughs> you can start next time by saying to Josh and, and so you're climbing up the side of a canyon and you look up and you see Big Hustle and is hurtling <laughs> towards you. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> Yep. Bacon roll. Felix <laughs> is behind the wheel. Start the session evasion roll. You fail. Uh, well, just, roll makes character. you think of makes me think of Toots as the driving cat. <laughs> 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 yeah. For some reason the thing that really makes me laugh about that is they look up and they see Skrillex frozen. <laughs> <laughs> evasion and then they fail and they get killed by big hustling <laughs> or even if they make it they watch and they think Skrillex has just been killed <laughs> <laughs> that's cool well happy birthday thank you yeah uh, you guys I mean, have we'll a good holiday, you. too. We'll, we'll see you several times before then, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, happy, happy, uh, Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Yeah. Yep. I won't see you guys before then. Yeah, have a good holiday. All right, guys. Take care. Take care, everyone.